everyone welcome back to another video on react native so in this video we'll be building a full stack linkedin app in react native using the expo framework and the expo router and for the backend part we'll be making use of mongodb so if you find this interesting please hit the like button and also subscribe for more such content so let's get started so firstly we'll be looking into the demo of the app so towards my right is the first screen that is being shown that is the home screen where we can see a bunch of posts uh, posted by different users that are logged into the app so for each post we have the description of the user who has posted the post the description of the post as well as the image and we can you know uh, see more if at all if you want to read the description of that post just like this okay so you can basically like and comment the post all right and over here at the top we have the profile screen of that particular user where we get where we are showing just the basic information of the user and we can you know go ahead and add the bio for that particular user so that's it about the profile screen next we have something known as a network tab so here in the network tab we are showing all of the users uh, which are logged in to this particular app so that we can connect with them so let's say i, I am going to connect with the first two people so we're going to send the connection request to these two people okay so in their user profile over here we're going to show that we have uh, requested them to connect with us right and over here we have something known as manage my network which is going to show us the list of all the people we are connected with in this particular app so currently we have three connections as you can see over here and finally we have the post tab where we can go ahead and you know post a post so that that post is going to get reflected in the home screen so basically this time we are going to uh, use firebase bucket for firebase storage bucket for storing the image so that it becomes easier while fetching the same image in the home screen so we'll be building up this much in this video so if you find this interesting please hit the like button and let's get started with the project right away so the first step is to create a expo manage project so let's go do that so firstly we're going to create a bare expo project and inside that we're going to inject the expo router and then use it so inside my terminal firstly i'm inside my build folder as you can see so here i'm going to say npx create expo app and then i'm going to press an enter so this would ask us to choose a project name so here in my case i'm going to say linkedin uh, youtube just like this and i'm going to press an enter So this is going to take in a couple of minutes to initialize our project for us and after that we're going to go into the project structure and then look into the files that expo has given us. So let's wait for some time. Alright guys so our project is ready as you can see this message your project is ready. So now the next step is we're going to go into this particular folder that is linked in YouTube inside my build folder. So press on file open folder go into my build folder over here and then select the first project that is linked in YouTube. Alright, so towards the left hand side is the file tree that expo has given us when we initialize a fresh expo project and this is the main app.js where we are returning just a basic view as you can see. Alright, so now the first step is let's run the app. So I'm going to press on terminal, new terminal and here I'm going to say npx expo start and I'm going to press on enter. Okay. So as you can see we have a few options to view our app so for android users you need to press on a and for ios simulator you need to press on i and to see the app on the web just press on w so in my case i'm going to press on i because it is an ios simulator so this should take in a couple of minutes to install the app and then just show this particular output that is this particular text so let's give it some time Okay guys, so you can see towards the right side, we are able to see the text which says open up app.js to start working on your app. If npx expo start doesn't work, you can try using npm start or yarn start or expo start as well. Alright, so now the next step is as I told, we are going to inject the expo router to this particular app, right? So firstly, let's head over to Chrome and we're going to search for expo router. We've already done this in the previous video, you can check that out. We're going to follow the same similar steps here as well. So come to the first link and then press on quick start or you can press on manual uh, installation. Okay, so we have done the first step. So the next step is we need to install uh, these dependencies. So let's copy the code and let's come back over here. New terminal and I'm going to paste it over here. So let's give it some time to install all of the required dependencies. 
okay so all of the dependencies have been installed you can check that in the package.json so now we need to set up the entry point that is going to happen inside of the package.json so just copy this piece of code and we're going to go into the package.json over here and instead of this one that is expo app entry.js we're going to put this particular piece of code that is expo rotor forward slash entry and save the file so now after that we need to you know modify the project configuration by adding the scheme value you can pretty much give your app name over here so i'm gonna go to the app.json and uh, you can add it let's say over here all right so i'm just gonna pass in the app name that is linkedin youtube just like this so save the file so after that we need to make changes in the babel.config.js that is by adding the plugins array that is this one which includes the expo router forward slash babel so let's go over here and we're going to add it right here so save the file so now uh, we're going to create so as you can see uh, we have a message which says detected a change in babel.config.js so we need to restart the server to see the updated changes so i'm going to cut the server all right so now for uh, us to use the expo router we need to have something known as the app router in the root level of our directory so i'm going to press on app.js and then create our app router with the help of new folder so this is basically our app router so i'm going to create the first root that is the home root which is signified by index.js okay so on fps to get the shorthand snippet so to get these uh, a shorthand snippets you need to have installed es7 inside your systems so go to the extensions tab and uh, do install this one that is, e, uh, that is es7 react redux or react native snippets okay so let's close this one and let's come back to the file tree and now uh, as soon as i run the app you need to be seeing this particular page opening up because this signifies index.js actually signifies this home root that is just forward slash okay so i'm gonna run the app i'm just gonna say yarn start so yarn start i'm gonna close this off and i'm gonna press enter on the terminal so let's wait hopefully we should have done everything correctly uh let's save the file once so now i'm gonna press on i that is to open the app on the ios simulator okay guys so as you can see towards the right we are seeing the first page being rendered on the screen that is the index.js because this signifies the initial root that is forward slash okay so whatever files or uh, folders you create uh, inside of the app directory that itself is going to become the root of that particular directory okay so yep we have finished the first part that is successfully injecting expo router into the uh, LinkedIn YouTube project. So now the next step is we're going to set up the backend that is MongoDB and then we're going to create a new project in the backend and after that we're going to create two screens that is for logging in as well as registering the user. So firstly let's head over to MongoDB and then you know start creating a new project. Now let's head over to Chrome and then open up MongoDB. So here I'm going to search for mongodb.com and we're going to log in with Google. Okay, so we have currently opened up MongoDB and over here, the currently selected project is going to show over here. So let's press on the drop down and I'm going to scroll down and then press on new project. So here, let's give the project name. I'm going to say LinkedIn, YouTube, something like this. And I'm going to press on next. So here I myself am the project owner. So I'm just going to press on create project. And now we need to, you know, create a deployment. So I'm just going to press on create. So make sure you choose the free version that is M0, which gives a 512 MB of storage. And apart from this, we're going to leave this as default and I'm going to press on create over here. Okay. So now we need to create our user. So the username, I'm going to give it my name 
and the password also i'm just going to give it my name itself i'm going to press in create user all right so here we're going to add this one that is 0.0.0, .0 forward slash zero so it's accessible from anywhere okay so this since is a tutorial i'm just going to do this and i'm going to press in add entry over here all right so yes the entry has been done so i'm going to press in finish and close uh, so go to overview so as you can see we are deploying your changes so this is going to take in a couple of minutes to initialize our backend database so now we're going to go into our uh our vs code and then create our api folder so let's press on app.js new folder api so let's go to the terminal make sure you are into the api folder so just write cd api and here firstly we're going to initialize our package.json so to do that i'm going to say npm init let's press on enter so package name is going to be api version is that one description let's say backend and entry point is index.js test command git repository all the other things let's press on enter is this okay yes so if you check out our api folder as you can see a package.json file is created for us so now we're going to install some dependencies required into our package.json so that we can write it so that we can use that uh, while writing the backend code in the index file right so here again we are currently in the api folder so here with the help of yarn i'm going to add some dependencies so firstly we need body parser course uh, express we need a uh, json web token we need access to mongoose as well and malta a uh, node mailer as well and apart from that we need node mon so these are some of the dependencies required for initializing and writing the code for the backend so i'm going to press on enter so all of these dependencies will be installed in the package or json over here so let's give it some time so as you can see everything has been installed in the dependencies object so now the next step is i'm going to initialize the starting point in the scripts right so here i'm going to say start script uh, the start script it's going to be node mon index.js so save the file and i'm going to create the index.js file inside of my uh, api folder where all of the backend code is going to go so here firstly we're going to import the required things that is necessary for initializing our backend so i'm going to say const express equals to require of express require express and after that we need access to body parser so i'm going to say const body parser equals to require of body parser then i'm going to initialize mongoose so i'm going to say const mongoose equals to require of mongoose and const crypto equals to require of crypto all right and i need access to my node mailer as well so const node mailer equals to a require of node mailer okay so these are some of the dependencies or these are some of the import statements that are required at the start of the index.js file so now i'm going to in uh, initiate the app instance so i'm going to say const app equals to express just like this and i'm going to choose my port so i'm going to choose 8000 over here so const port equals to 8000 i'm going to initialize my course so const course equals to require of course and i'm going to write app.use of course so that gets initialized right so after that we're going to write two more middlewares that is app.use body parser dot url encoded extended is extended is going to be false over here all right and after that I'm gonna say app dot use of the body parser dot json just like this. So now we're gonna initialize mongoose, and then after that we can write the app dot listen method. So over here, firstly before initializing that, let's save the file. Let's head over to the backend. So as you can see, our database has been initialized. So now let's press on the connect button over here. So we have the third option that is mongodb for vs code so let's press on that so make sure you copy this uri this is useful for connecting our front end app to the uh, mongodb backend 
so copy that out and we have already initialized mongoose as you can see so i'm going to say mongoose with the help of the connect method i'm going to paste in my url over here and as you can see we need to pass our password in this particular field so my password is going to be my name itself so just make change for that whatever password you've given just write that over here and after that i'm going to provide some options to this particular connect method that is basically use new url parser equals to true and use a unified topology equals to true so after this has been executed i'm going to apply the then method to this which is going to take in the function and here i'm going to say console.log connected to mongodb all right and if at all there is any error while implementing this we're going to catch that error so i'm going to say catch of error so here i'm going to write console.log error connecting to mongodb with that particular error whatever it is and finally we have the last method that is of course the listen method so i'm going to say app.listen so here it's, it's going to take in basically the port number and the function so over here basically i'm just going to say console.log a server is running on port 8000 something like this okay so yes that's it so this is the initialization of our mongodb backend hopefully it should work fine let's give this a try so save the file and inside the api folder to run this particular file or folder i'm going to say yarn start so if, so if everything works out correctly you need to be seeing this message that is connected to mongodb and server is running on port 8000 so save the file and let's press and enter over here okay we have an error as you can see let's look into where we've gone wrong okay already okay uh, it says address already in use so instead of uh, 8000 uh, let's say i, I want to choose 3000 okay so save the file as you can see server is running on port 800 okay connected to mongodb so we have successfully connected this particular app that is linked in youtube to this particular backend that is our mongodb backend okay so if something like this occurs you can just change the port number and then you can look into how we can make this work right so now before you know initializing and designing the login screens as well as the register screens i'm going to look into uh, firstly writing all of the models required uh, in this particular app that is basically the user model as well as the post model so firstly let's create a models folder inside of a file tree that is inside of the api folder and then let's start defining how exactly our user model is going to look like and how exactly our post model is going to look like so now i'm just going to open up my file tree and then create a new folder inside of my api folder that is models and inside my models folder i'm going to create my first model that is the user.js so i'm just going to say user.js and let's start defining how our user model is going to look like so firstly i'm going to initialize my mongoose so I'm going, to, I'm going to say const mongoose equals to require mongoose and here I'm going to initialize my user schema. So const user schema equals to new mongoose dot schema. It's going to take in an object and here we're going to write in the first property that is going to be name. So it's going to have a type of string. So I'm going to say type string and required is going to be required is going to be true and after that we have the next attribute that is email type is going to be string and required is going to be true and after email we have basically password so i'm going to say password type is going to be string over here as well and required is going to be true and for the email we are also going to say unique is going to be true so after the password field we have verified or not so i'm going to say verified uh, it's going to be a type of boolean and by default it's going to be false so as and when the user registers we're going to send the 
verification email to the user's email and once uh, they press on that particular link then this verified is going to become true so by default it's going to be false right so we have something known as the verification token as well so verification token that is basically going to be in the type of a string so i'm going to say string so after the verification token we have the profile image of the user which is going to be string and we have something known as the user description or the bio so over here it's going to be type of string and by default it's going to be null when the user registers and goes to the profile screen they can update their user profile i mean they can update their user description or the bio so by default i'm going to say it's going to be null so that is it about the user description next we have the connections of the particular user so i'm going to say connections so a user can have a number of connections so it's going to be in the form of an array and we're going to write the type that is mongoose dot schema dot types dot object id and reference is going to be user <coughs> so reference is going to be user after that connections we have something known as the connection requests that is going to be also in the form of an array because we can have n number of connection requests from other users in the app so again i'm going to write in the type over here it's going to be mongoose dot schema dot types dot object id all right and reference is going to be of the user so that was it about the connection requests so after the connection requests we have the send connection requests okay so i'm going to say send connection requests this also is in the form of an array with the type so mongoose dot schema dot types dot object id all right and the reference is going to be uh, of the user itself okay so after that we have the posts of that particular user so a user can have n number of posts so again it's going to be in the in the form of an array so i'm going to say type so it's going to be mongoose dot schema dot types dot object id okay and we have the reference it's going to be to the post and finally we have the last one that is created at so it's going to be a type of date and default is going to be date dot now all right so these are some of the required parameters or attributes for our user schema you can just go through it from the beginning so here we're going to export the required value so i'm going to say const user equals to mongoose dot model of user and this is going to take in the particular schema that is user schema and here i'm going to say module dot exports equals to user so that's it so this was it about the user schema so i'm going to save the file and then i'm going to go back to the file tree and then i'm going to press in models a uh, new file this is going to be the post.js so now let's start defining the parameters required for the post schema so firstly let's initialize our mongoose so const mongoose equals to require of mongoose and here i'm going to start defining my post schema so const post schema equals to a new mongoose dot schema it's going to take in again an object and for the first thing we have over here is the description so i'm going to say description it's going to be in the form of the string the image url of that particular post again it's going to be in the form of the string and the user who has posted that particular post okay so type is going to be uh, mongoose dot schema dot types dot object id 
all right and reference is going to be to the user and required is going to be true and after that we have the likes of that particular post okay so a post can have n number of likes so it's going to be in the form of an array so we're also going to store which particular user has liked that post so user object type is going to be a mongoose dot schema dot types dot object id a reference is going to be to the user and after that we have the comments of that particular post so comments again it's going to be in the form of an array and we're going to show which particular user commented what so user type is going to be mongoose dot schema dot type dot object id reference is of course going to be to the user and apart from this we're going to say the text that is what exactly is the comment it's going to be in the form of a string and at what time it was created so created at is going to be of course type is going to be date similar to the previous one and default is going to be or date dot now okay so this was it about the comments so the next thing we'll be looking into is basically the user who has posted it so over here and i'm going to say user okay i think we have already written that over here at the top okay so let's not write it over here then we have the last one that is basically created at that is at which, which particular time this post was created so type is going to be date and default is going to be dated now so these are the required attributes for the post schema you can look into it once more and after that we're going to export the required value so i'm going to say const post equals to a mongoose dot model of post it's going to take in the schema we have already defined it that is the post schema right and after that i'm going to say module dot export exports equals to post okay so save the file so we have you know defined two schemas that is required in this app that is the user schema as well as the post schema so now the next step is we're going to define and initialize two screens inside of our app directory okay that is basically the login screen as well as the register screen so let's look into the design and implementation of the logging in and registering of the users so now in the file tree i'm going to create the root for authentication purpose okay so i'm going to press on app and then new folder i'm going to name it as authenticate just like this okay so inside this root we have we will be having two pages that is login screen as well as the register screen so i'm going to press on new file pressing on authenticate folder let's create a new file that is login.js so rnfes to get the short hand snippet so save the file and again press on authenticate new for i mean new file uh, register.js rnfes to get the short hand snippet and save the file so now we're going to initialize something known as the layout for this particular route that is authenticate so let's press on new file so this is the convention that is underscore layout.js so here we want something known as the stack because we have two screens that is login and the register screen and the and the user should be able to switch between both the screens so here firstly i'm going to say import stack from expo router all right and here i'm going to say export default function layout so here i'm going to return basically the stack because that's what we want so i'm going to say import i mean uh, import sorry uh, return stack and over here it's going to be the first screen so i'm going to say stack dot screen name is going to be login and i'm going to provide some options so basically header shown is going to be false and i'm going to create my second stack screen so i'm going to say stack dot screen our name is going to be 
or a register and options is going to be again same thing header shown is going to be false all right so save the file so now we have created the layout for the authenticate part uh, that is basically login and register pages so now as i told this index.js is going to be the main route that is forward slash every time this is going to get loaded when the app loads initially but we do not want this page to be seen right we, we either want the login screen to be seen or we either want the home screen to be seen where there are posts by different users correct so now we have something known as the redirect so we'll be making use of that so firstly uh, i'm going to remove everything inside of the return block and i'm just going to make use of the redirect that's going to come from the expo router so make sure you import redirect from expo router just like this and this is going to take in the href path so i'm going to say href and here currently since we are designing the login screen i'm just going to pro uh, provide the uh, path for the login screen so the path is going to be forward slash firstly i need to go into my authenticate so i'm just going to say authenticate and after that i want to go into my login screen because we're designing that so again forward slash login so as soon as i save the file you should be seeing this particular screen towards the right that is in the output so let us save the file so as you can see this is the first screen that is being seen because in the index file which is the home route we have given the redirect method which says go to authenticate and then go to the login so now let's start designing our login screen so we're going to make this look like a simple design that we have been following from the previous projects right so firstly i'm going to make use of my safe area view let's you know uh, make the safe area view i mean let's make use of this instead of the normal view that is present all right and we're going to initialize the view firstly that's going to contain the image i'm just going to get the code for the image yes i've just pasted the code for the image that is for the uh, logo you can just copy that out or i'll be sending the image link in the description so let's import image from react native just like this and let's give the style for the how to most safe area view so basically i'm going to give a flex of one and i'm going to give it a background color of white and i'm going to say <coughs> align items of center so i'm just going to save the file so as you can see we're able to see that icon being uh, positioned towards the center part of the screen at the top so after that i'm going to initialize my keyboard avoiding view so i'm going to say keyboard avoiding view import that from react native just like this and over here i'm going to initialize my view okay so firstly let's give some basic styling to this that is align items of center and inside the view it's going to have the text which says uh, login to your account save the file so let's uh, provide some styling to this piece of text so i'm going to say font size of 17 font weight of bold and uh, basically some margin top of 12 and i'm going to give a specific color that is this color code okay yep that's looking good so now the next step is we're going to start initializing our input fields so format once so after this view i'm going to initialize one more view over here and this is going to basically have another piece of view in screen we need access to two things the email and the password so let's head over to expo icons and let's get access to the uh, email icon so let us choose it from material icons it's okay so just import the icon family first you're gonna paste it over here and firstly then uh, copy the render component code you're gonna paste it over here after that i need access to my text input where we can write the email so import text input from react native as such and i'm gonna give some place placeholder to this 
so placeholder it's gonna be enter your email alright so format once and save the file so you should be seeing that coming on the screen so as you can see we have the icon as well as the text input so let's give some uh, style to the outermost view so here I'm gonna say flex direction of row align items of center a gap between both of them that is the icon and the text input so gap of 5 and I'm gonna give it this background color that is uh, e0 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 and a bit of padding vertical space let's say padding vertical of 5 border radius of 5 and I'm gonna give it a slight margin top so margin top of 30 so format once and let us you know save the file all right so now let's give some style to the icon over here so style I'm gonna give it margin left to this margin left of 8 and save the file all right so let's also give some styling to the next part that is the text input So I'm gonna say color of gray, margin vertical of 10. I'm gonna increase the width over here. Let's say width of 300 and save the file. Okay, yep, that's looking fine. So we're gonna give it uh, give a margin top of 70 for this particular view. So I'm gonna say style margin top of 70. All right. So yep, that's looking nice so now after that we we have the next piece of input that's going to be for the password so here i'm going to say view okay so just copy this piece of view and then make the changes right so paste it over here save the file let's give a bit of margin top to this so margin top of 10 okay yeah so over here let's start making the changes so firstly the icon we need the lock icon over here so search for lock let's choose this one import the icon family first and over here copy that into component code and we're gonna paste it instead of the material icons okay and just copy the margin left of 8 for this as well so i think the color of the icon should be in gray so make that change as well gray over here uh, gray over here as well all right and for the text input we are going to say secure text entry is going to be true because this is the password field so format once and instead of enter your email it's going to be enter your password Yep, I think that's looking nice. So now after that, I'm going to initialize one more piece of view that contains two pieces of text. So this is going to say, keep me logged in. And we have the second text coming, which says forgot password. So let's start designing the view over here. So I'm going to give it a basic margin top of 12 and a flex direction of row align items of center and justify between so justify content space between okay yep that's looking nice so for the second piece of text we're going to give it a different color so let's start writing the style for this so style color is going to be this color code 007 triple f and I'm going to give it a specific font weight of 500. Okay, yeah, that's looking nice. So now after that, show the login button at the bottom part over here. So after this view, I'm going to have one piece of view that is self enclosing and I'm going to give it a margin top to this. So I'm going to say margin top of 80. And after this, I'm going to initialize my pressable. That's going to contain the button import pressable from react native. 
it's going to say login so yep let's start giving the style for the pressable so it's going to have a specific width of 200 background color of this color code that is 007 2b1 and it's going to have a border radius of 6 and margin left of auto and margin right of auto as well so it comes to the center part of the screen and some uh, padding internal spacing of 15 so for the text also i'm going to give the style so i'm going to say style uh first of all text align of center okay and we are we are going to give it a color of white font size of 16 and a font weight of bold so this is the styles required for the pressability as you can check it out right so save the file as you can see we're able to see that login button at the center part of the screen so after the pressable we have another pressable uh, which is going to contain the text which says if you do not have an account then please register so here i'm going to say don't have an account then sign up so let's provide some margin top to this pressable firstly so I'm going to say margin top of 15 and over here I am I'm going, I'm giving the styles for the text so text align of center color is going to be gray and a font size of 16 so save the file as you can see our login screen is uh, being designed properly and it's looking good so now we need to you know initialize the state so that we can uh, track whatever the user is typing in both the fields that is the email field as well as the password field so for that firstly i'm going to initialize two pieces of state at the top so here i'm going to say const email comma set email equals to use state and initially it's going to be an empty string make sure you import use state from react All right, and I'm going to initialize my second piece of state that is the password. So I'm going to say const password comma set password equals to use state. Again, it's going to be empty string at the initial state. So now let's come back to the view. I mean to the text input. So we have something known as the value prop that the text input is going to take. So value is going to be whatever is there that is stored inside of the email. And we have something known as the on change text. So we're going to use that. So whatever text the user is typing in the input field we are going to set the state for that particular text so we're going to say set email to be whatever the user is typing in the text field so on change of text is going to be set email of that particular text and over here i'm going to make one more change that is with the font size if at all we have the email so if at all we have the email it's going to be 18 else also it's going to be 18 So format once and save the file. Okay, so this is to just increase the font size of this particular placeholder. That's it. So now let's come to the next one that is with the password text input. We're, we're gonna do the similar thing. So value in this case is gonna be password, and again we're gonna make use of the on change text. So on change text so it's going to take in the text attribute and we're just going to set the state so it's going to be set password of whatever the user is typing in the password field that is text it's going to come from over here all right we have uh, completed this so again let's make the changes for the styles that is for the font size if at all we have the password make it to be 18 else also make it to be 18 yep that's looking nice Okay, so we have, you know, uh, initiated the state values for both of them, that is email and password. So now the next step is, uh, if at all the user presses on this particular pressable, that is don't have an account signed up, we need to navigate the user to the next screen. So firstly, we're gonna initialize something known as the router. That's gonna come from expo router. So I'm gonna say const router equals to use router. 
export import use router from export router just like this and over here uh, on press we're gonna create the on press event on the pressable so i'm gonna say on press it's gonna take in a function so here i'm gonna say router dot replace to this particular uh, path that is register forward slash register so format once uh, i think instead of replace you can even use push and try it out okay i'm going to use replace so let's press and don't have an account we are automatically coming to the register screen so now the next step is we're going to start and design the register screen so just copy down everything that is there instead of the return block of the login screen over here that is basically the entire safe area view and we're gonna just make the changes for the register screen so paste it over here make sure you import safe area view uh, we need access to the image we need access to the pressable we need access to keyboard avoiding view we need access to the text input as well so text input and apart from that uh, the icons as well right so these two are going to be same that is material icons and the uh, and design and if there are any remaining icons required we're gonna import that as well so yep i think that's it uh yeah let us also initialize the states that is required so we need email password and apart from that we need two more things the image and the name of the user uh, make sure you import use state from react just like this and i'm gonna save the file okay so yep this is our register screen so now let's start making the changes so instead of login to your account it's gonna be register uh, to your account all right so register to your account so here the first field is gonna be the name field so let's make the change so value is gonna be Firstly, let's create the states apart from email and password. I'm going to say const name comma set name equals to use state of an empty string. And the final one is the image. So const image comma set image equals to use state of an empty string again. So as I told, the first one is going to be the name field. So I'm going to say value is going to be name and over here on change instead of set email it's going to be set name here also name placeholder is going to be enter your name so the icon also should be changed we're going to make use of the person icon over here so just copy this out import it right over here and copy the render component code we're gonna paste it over here okay so color is gonna be gray and we're gonna give it a margin left of 8 I guess was it 8 yeah it was 8 so save the file yeah so as you can see the first uh, input field has been correctly set up so the next one is we need the email So I'm just going to copy down uh, uh, this one, this view, uh, not this one. Copy down this and paste it over here. Okay, I think let's remove the margin top that's not required. Without the margin top, it's actually looking good. Okay, so we need one more thing. So this is for the name this is for the name again that we've written and again one more over here so yeah yeah these are the required things so now let's start making the change so first one is done that is the name so the second one uh, we need is the email all right so email over here and the email icon we want that is that is there inside of the login screen just copy that out this one
so over here instead of set name it's gonna be set email okay and over here also it's gonna be email enter your email yeah so yep the second one has been set up so the third one is going to be password so just copy that out it's already been set up so let's uh, just copy this view and this is going to be the third one we're going to paste it after the email okay so yeah name email and password has been set let's remove this view that's not required because we're not giving the margin top and the final one is going to be image so password everything is correctly set up so for image let's get the image icon let's choose this one from end typo so copy the render component code and we're gonna paste it for the final one that is this one right so paste it over here uh, just change the color to be gray again so gray and style i mean margin left of eight right margin left of eight value is going to be image for this one and instead of set name it's going to be set image and over here also instead of name if at all we have the image okay so save the file and as you can see we have okay we need to change the placeholder so instead of enter your image i mean enter your name you're going to say enter your image url yeah i think that's looking better okay so yeah uh, i don't think we need uh, that much space over here because we have four inputs let's keep this to be 50 yeah 50 is looking better so now for the buttons instead of login it's gonna be register so let's make that change over here okay and over here already have an account and then sign up okay so over here instead of router or replace it's going to be router or replace to be uh, of the login screen let's firstly initialize our router so cons router equals to use router make sure to import that from expo router make the change here as well so instead of login i mean instead of register it's going to be login so save the file uh, go to the next screen and let's press and already have an account sign up we're going to come back to the main screen that is the login screen so we have successfully designed both of the screens in a simpler way that is login screen as well as a register screen so now the next step is we're going to you know initialize some endpoints to register as well as login that particular user and store the user inside of a mongodb backend so now we're going to go into our index.js file inside of our api folder and then start writing the endpoint for registering the user so i'm going to say endpoint to register a user in the backend so here i'm going to write app.post and the endpoint is going to be forward slash register and it's going to take in of course the async method with the request and the result in the callback so firstly we're going to initialize our try catch block so here i'm going to say try catch of error so firstly let's define the catch block so i'm just going to say console.log uh, error registering the user with that particular error and i'm going to say result.status of 500 dot json with this particular message which says uh, registration failed okay so that was it about the uh, catch block so now inside the try block firstly to register the user we need access to four things as you have seen that is the name email password and then the image url so i'm just gonna get that over here so here i'm gonna say const restructure the values that is name uh, email and then the password 
and we also require the image as well so i'm just going to say profile image for this so profile image equals to requested body so request dot body over here and firstly we're going to say check if the email is already registered so to do that firstly i'm going to initialize a constant that is const existing user equals to await so firstly let's import both of the models uh, from that particular folder over here so i'm going to say const user equals to require go into the models folder and then access the user so similarly i'm going to say const post equals to require uh, go into the models folder and access the post so here i'm going to say const existing user equals to await user dot find one we're going to make use of this method and we're going to pass in the email so we're going to check if the user is already registered with this particular email that the user is going to enter so here i'm going to say if at all there is any existing user present uh, then in that case over here we're going to send the result dot status so firstly i'm going to write my console dot log over here it says email already registered all right and i'm going to send the result that is result dot status of let's say 400 dot json with a message saying email is already registered email already registered okay so yeah that is so this condition has been checked so now we're going to say create a new user if that email is new so I'm going to say const new user equals to new access the user model that we have created and imported. So we need access to four things that is the name, email, uh, the password as well as the profile image. Okay, so after doing this we're going to generate basically the verification token. So I'm going to say generate the verification token over here okay so to do that i'm going to say new user we have already something known as verification token over here that is inside of a schema right we're going to make use of that so just copy that out over here and over here i'm going to say new user dot verification token equals to crypto we have already initialized crypto at the starting point of the video that is this one okay so with the help of that we're going to create a 20 digit or 16 digit number so here i'm going to say uh, i mean uh, uh, 20 digit or 16 digit characters right so here i'm going to say crypto dot random bytes of let's say 20 dot two string of hex so this is going to basically give us the bunch of characters required and this is going to be our verification token after that i'm going to say save the user to the database so to do that i'm going to say wait new user dot save right that's it and after that we're going to send the uh, verification email uh, to the registered user so i'm going to initialize my new function over here that is send verification email to the email that is going to be new user dot email and the token is going to be new user dot verification token okay so after that we're going to send the result so i'm going to say result dot status if to not one dot json with a message being registration successful uh, please check uh, please check your mail for verification something like this all right so format once and uh, yeah let's uh, now initialize the next function that is send verification email all right so let's do that so over here i'm gonna uh, define that function 
so const send verification email equals to a async function okay so async and this is going to take in basically two things that we have passed over here that is the email of the user and the verification token that is generated by this crypto so i'm going to pass in the email i'm going to receive this or the email and the very very uh, verification token so verification token so firstly to implement this uh, send verification email we will be making use of this particular node mailer right so over here inside the send verification email firstly i'm going to create the transporter that is a node mailer transporter so here i'm going to write const transporter equals to node mailer dot we have the create transport method so i'm going to say create transport it's going to take in an object so uh, here we're going to pass in some required details that is the service uh, in my case i'm going to use gmail so i'm going to write gmail and we need to provide the auth object which is going to contain two things the user as well as the passcode so user is going to be my email in your case you can write your email because from this email you're going to send the verification email to the registered user all right and after that user we have the passcode so to to so to generate this passcode you need to head over to your uh, google account and press on manage google account and make sure you've enabled your two factor authentication so let's head over to chrome and then let's uh, get this passcode i've already generated this so i'll show you how to get the passcode so head over to a new tab uh, select your account and then press on manage google account so uh, we have come to this particular page and over here let's search for app passwords all right so this one and make sure it is you so just log in over here so as you can see these are all of my app passwords that are, that are generated in the previous ones right so i've already generated uh, previously that one i'm going to use so to generate over here just press i mean just write node mailer as the app name and as soon as you press on create you're going to see that 16 digit set of characters so that is basically going to be a passcode okay so before this try to enable your two-factor authentication for your google account and yeah i think pretty much it should work so i'm just going to paste my passcode over here so i have added my passcode in the auth object right so now the next step is we're going to compose the email so here i'm going to say const mail options so const mail options equals to an object we're going to write the different set of values so i'm going to say from let's say linkedin at gmail.com something like this two is going to be to the registered user so i'm going to say to email this is coming from the parameter of the function right so two is going to be email and subject you can write anything in this case i'm going to say uh, email verification email verification okay the next thing is the text so here i'm going to make use of back text firstly so here i'm going to say please click uh, please click the following link to verify your email so it's going to be http http uh, forward slash localhost localhost uh, in our case it's 3000 and forward slash verify and it's going to be forward slash the verification token right so we are going to define this endpoint in just a bit so this verification token is coming from this particular parameter okay so let's format once okay so now the next step is we're gonna send the email so here i'm gonna say send the mail so we have something known as a send mail option so finally I mean uh, for firstly i'm gonna initialize my try catch block over here as well so catch of error here i'm gonna say uh, console dot log of error basically we're gonna write a message which says error sending the uh, verification email okay so let's write this correctly error sending the verification email and inside the try block as i told we have something known as the send mail option so here i'm going to say wait uh, transporter wait uh, transporter is going to come from this particular line that is 74 where we have in initialized earlier so here i'm going to say await transporter dot with the help of send mail method i'm going to pass in the mail options that we have defined just now that is this particular object 
okay and after that i'm just going to give a console.log message uh, saying uh, verification uh, email uh, sent successfully okay so yep i think that's looking better so let's save the file once and format it as well So now the next step is we're going to write the endpoints to verify that particular email. I mean that particular verification mail. So here I'm going to say uh, endpoint to verify email. So I'm going to say app dot get method. It's going to be forward slash verify and forward slash token because it is similar to this one, right? So forward slash verify forward slash token. It's going to be forgot to put the colon, right? So it's going to be have the async and uh, of course it's going to have the request and the result in the callback so firstly we're going to initialize our try uh, catch block so catch of error i'm going to say result dot status of 500 dot json with the message being email verification failed if at all there is any kind of error and inside the try block, firstly, I'm going to say access the token from the request.params. So here it's here to access that it's going to be const token equals to request.params.token. Okay. So firstly, we're going to find if at all the user with uh, uh, if at all the user is going to have that verification token. So here I'm going to say const user equals to await user dot find one. Uh, find with the help of the find one method i'm going to access the verification token verification token that should match with this particular token that is that is sent to the email if that's the case then we have that particular user then if we have that user then we have to go into the verified of that particular user and then make it to be true okay so here i'm going to say if at all there is no user with that particular token which is sent then we are going to say return result dot status of 404 dot json with the message being invalid verification token okay so if at all there is a user with that verification token then i'm gonna say mark the user as verified okay simple so to do that it, we're gonna say user dot verified equals to true and after that we're going to remove the verification token from the back end so to do that i'm going to write user verification token equals to undefined and i'm going to write uh, await user dot save so these details get uh, saved in the back end part and i'm going to send the result so result dot status of 200 dot json with the message being email verified successfully okay so this was it about the verification part so now let's go into the front end part and then you know create the front end function to register the user so let's go over here and let's create on press event on this particular button so on press equals to handle register okay so i'm going to define this function right at the top over here so let's do it over here so const handle register equals to an arrow function so here for registering we need access to four things as we know the name email password and the image url so i'm going to say const user equals to an object so the name is going to be name that is stored inside of state email is going to be email that is stored inside of state password is going to be password that is stored inside of state and the next thing we want is the profile image that is stored inside of state that is image okay so this is the user object so now we're going to make basically a post request to the backend api so firstly let's install the dependency that is axios so open up a new terminal and make sure you install this in the main directory linked in youtube so i'm going to write yarn add axios so let's wait for it to install the package all right guys so axios has been installed into our project so here i'm going to make use of the post request 
So firstly, you know, let's import Axios from Axios. I think the system is too slow. So let's import it manually over here. So here I'm going to write import Axios from Axios. So here I'm going to write Axios.post method. Uh, this is going to be the URL that is HTTP uh, localhost 3000 forward slash register. So this is going to take in basically the user object. So after you know uh, executing this, we're going to apply the then method. So I'm going to say dot then it's going to give us the response. Okay, so if you want, you can you know console.log the response over here. And if at all there is any error, we're going to catch it. And here I'm going to say alert dot alert. We're going to pass in two messages that is registration registration uh, successful and we're going to pass in the second message which says you have been registered successfully so you have been registered successfully so this is the second one so also make sure you import the alert from the react native okay so after doing this we're going to set all of the fields to be empty again so here i'm going to say set the name to be empty and set the email to be empty set the password to be empty as well as set the image to be empty all right and if at all there is any error while implementing this we're gonna catch the error and display it in the console so here i'm gonna say alert dot alert uh, again we're gonna pass in two things registration failed as well as an error occurred while registering okay and apart from that let's also console.log whatever error that is so console.log registration field with that particular error message okay so we have finally completed the uh, register handle register function so now let's give this a try hopefully if you have done everything correctly it should work out that is we need to store our first user in the mongodb backend so let's enter our name over here and i'm going to enter my email over here now i'm going to enter the password over here and finally i'm going to get my image url okay guys i've just pasted my image url so now i'm just going to press on the register button so as you can see, we are able to see that model which says registration is successful. You have been registered successfully, right? So this part is working absolutely fine. So for people who are using their own phone to try this out, you can just read the description and just follow that. It should work correctly on your phone. Else you can just comment down below or you can text me on Instagram as well. So I'm going to press on OK and we're going to check in the backend if at all a user has been registered. So let's go to the MongoDB and I'm going to press on database and I'm gonna press on connect, I mean, uh, browse collections. So here we should have the first user that is registered. Okay, so as you can see, this is the name, email, the password. This is my profile, uh, this is my profile image and currently uh, verified as false because I've not checked my email yet. And this is the verification token and this is the created at time. So pretty much we have all the information of this particular user. So I'm just going to go to my mail and then check if at all we have received the verification email correctly. So I'm going to open my Gmail. So as you can see, I have received the verification mail. It says, please click the following link to verify your email. So as soon as I click on this, that particular endpoint is going to get triggered off. That is verify and then token. And you should be seeing this message which says email verified successfully. So now if I go to my MongoDB backend and if I refresh, this verify should become true and this should be undefined that is verification token so let's refresh once so as you can see verified is true and there is no verification token right so yeah uh, if at all you are not getting any kind of verification email try to generate one more uh, node mailer app I mean try to generate this one more time just delete the previous one and then delete I mean and then generate it one more time and then you can use that particular 16 digit characters okay 
and make sure you import the, i mean make sure you have that uh, two factor authentication enabled so that this particular thing works out okay so if any problem you're facing in this particular part you can just comment down below or you can also check out the github code and yeah if you're trying out on your phone please read the description and then you can just follow that it should pretty much work okay so this part is done so now the next part is we're going to initiate the endpoint for logging in and we're going to define the function for logging in as well so here i'm going to write end point to log in a user okay so let's save the file so here firstly i'm going to write app dot post and the endpoint is going to be forward slash login so it's going to be a async method and it's going to take in of course two things that is the request and the response in the callback so firstly we're going to initialize our try catch block so i'm going to say try catch of error and here i'm going to say result dot status of 500 dot json and the message is going to be login failed so inside the try block firstly to login we need access to two things that is the name or i mean that is the email and the password field okay so here let's get access to two things that is the email as well as the password is going to be request dot body all right so first of all we're going to check if at all uh the user is present or not So to do that, I'm going to initialize const user equals to await user.find1 with the help of that particular email. And if at all there is no user found, okay, we're going to return a result.status of 200, sorry, not 200, 401 dot JSON with the message being invalid email or password okay and after that we need to check if at all the password is correct for that particular email so i'm going to say check uh, the uh, check if the password is correct so to do that i'm going to say if at all the user dot password so this password is the, is the password that is stored in the backend is not equal equal to the password that the user is typed in the input field then that means the password is wrong right so here i'm going to say return result dot status of 401 dot json with the message being invalid password so if at all we have both the uh, email and the password correct for that particular email then we're going to generate the token and then send it in the result so to generate the token i'm going to say const token equals to jwt this this has already been initialized at the starting point of the video that is okay i don't think i've done that so yeah so firstly let's initialize this at the top so here it's going to be jwt dot sign basically the user ID is going to be user dot underscore ID and we're going to pass in basically the secret key so I'm just going to get the code for the secret key okay so I've just pasted the code to generate the secret key over here I've just initiated a function that is generate secret key and by the help of using the crypto and with the help of the random bytes we're going to return the secret key which is going to be stored inside of this particular constant variable so the same thing i've passed it over here right so the next thing is we need to uh, initialize our jwt at the top of the page so i'm going to scroll up over here and i'm going to paste this one that is const jwt is equals to require of json web token that we have installed earlier right so yep that's it about the login endpoint if everything is correct we need to be receiving this particular token in the result so let us send the result over here okay so here i'm going to say result dot status of 200 dot json of basically the token okay so format once and save the file 
So now the next step is we're going to go into the front end part and then create on press function on the login button. So let's head over to the login.js and uh, I'm going to create on press function on this pressable. So on press equals to handle login. So here I'm going to say const handle login equals to arrow function so to login we need access to two things that is the username i mean that is the email and the password so firstly i'm going to create my user object over here the email is going to be email and the password is going to be password so now with the help of axios and the post method we are going to make the backend api call so import axios from axios let's do that manually All right, and I'm going to say axios .post, and this is going to be my URL that is HTTP localhost 3000 forward slash login and it's going to take in of course the user. So now after this has been uh, executed, I'm going to apply the then method which is going to give us the response. If you want, you can console.log the response. So I'm going to say console.log of the response. Okay, so now the next step is we're going to store that token inside of the async storage. So let's head over to Chrome and let's firstly install async storage expo. So the first link, so with the help of this code, we're going to install it. So copy that code and over here inside the terminal, paste it like this. Okay, so this dependency has been installed. So after the console.log message, here I'm going to say const token equals to response dot data dot token okay so when we you know press on the login button you can just console console log the response and to get that token value it's going to be this value that is response dot data dot token and after that we're going to make use of async storage so async so async storage dot set item So with the help of set item method, first we're going to set the token by providing the key value. In my case, I'm going to provide auth token and I'm going to pass in the token itself. So let's import async storage. Okay, it's not auto importing. Let's head over to Chrome and uh, uh, let's see over here. So let's use this import statement and I'm going to paste it over here. Okay. So yep, that, that part is done. So after setting it, we're going to move to the next screen. I mean, uh, not the next screen, the home screen. So firstly, let's initialize a router. Router is already initialized. So here I'm going to say router dot replace to this particular endpoint that is taps and then forward slash home. So, yep, let's save the file once and we need to create, <coughs> okay, React Native Community async storage could not be found within the project. All right, let's see uh, if it's correctly installed. Yeah, it is installed. Let's head back to the login.js and uh, put it over here. Save the file. Yeah, I think now it's uh, working better. All right, so now we need to create our next uh, route inside of the app directory. That is this route, right? That is tabs and homes. So over here, let's press on app, new folder. I'm gonna name it tabs, enter. So firstly, we are just interested in the home. And when we initialize uh, the home, we're gonna initialize the other two as well. That is the network tabs as well as the post tab. So over here inside the tabs, I'm gonna create a new folder. There's gonna be home. And inside the home, I'm gonna create a, the new file, index.js. So rnfes 
to get the shotan snippet so save the file so this is going to be our initial home screen that is if at all we log in correctly right so let's go back to the login.js so that's pretty much the code for logging in so now we have one more piece of side effect that is basically initializing our user fact inside of the login.js file so here i'm going to initialize my user fact okay and uh, i'm going to initialize a function as well inside of my user fact so import user, user effect from react and not this dependency so here i'm going to initialize my function let's say const check our login status okay it's gonna be basically an async function so here we're going to initialize our try catch block so catch of error here i'm going to say console.log of error and inside the try block firstly uh, let's get access to the token over here so i'm going to say const token equals to await async storage dot to get the token we're going to make it to the get item and we are going to use the same key with which we set it previously so the token was auth token in my case right so i'm going to write auth token so here we're going to check the condition if at all the token is present then navigate to the uh, home tabs so it's going to be tutor dot replace to this particular route that's going to be forward slash tabs and i want to see the first tab being shown so it's going to be forward slash home okay and i'm going to call this right over here let us check login status save the file so now let's give this a try i'm going to log in with my particular email so i'm going to write in my email over here i'm going to enter my password and i'm going to press in login so as you can see we have successfully been logged in and we are seeing the home screen okay so you're seeing index because inside the home route there is just index as the text okay so yes that part is working absolutely fine so even if you refresh the app and then open it up once again it's going to go into the main route initially that is index.js here we have given redirect so it's going to go automatically to authenticate and login that means this login.js file and this is going to run that is check login status so since we have the token it automatically is going to show us the home screen okay so uh, the login part as well as the register part has been successfully completed so now the next step is we're going to look into the network tabs okay so that we can connect with the other person so firstly let's design the tab structure and then afterwards we're going to create a bunch of users in the back end and then we are going to implement the network tab so that we can connect with each other so now the next step is we're going to go into the tabs over here that is basically home in the in, uh, in the index.js file here we're going to start designing or we're going to create a layout for the tab so that we can see three tabs that is the home the network as well as the post so now i'm just going to create a new file that is the layout file inside of my home folder so here i'm going to say underscore layout.js and here also we're going to initialize our stack for the home screen so here i'm going to say firstly import stack from export router all right and here i'm going to write export default function layout so here basically we're going to return the stack because that's what we want in the home tab or the home screen so firstly i'm going to initialize my first screen so i'm going to say stack.screen the name is going to be the index itself that's the first thing which is going to be displayed when we come to the home tab so I'm going to say name is going to be index and the next one is going to be the profile screen that also is going to be inside of the home stack itself. So I'm going to press on home, a new file, the profile.js, R and F E S together short hand snippet. Save the file and over here the second screen I'm going to write stack.screen name is equals to profile 
and I'm going to give the screen options directly to the stack. So here, yeah, so over here, I'm going to write screen options. Uh, here I'm going to say header shown is going to be false. All right, so save the file. No changes should happen. Okay, so let's log in once more. All right, so now the next step is we're also going to simultaneously uh, give the folders for the next part that is network and the post. So I'm going to press on tabs, new folder, one for the network. Okay, let's create the main file that is index.js or an FES to get the short answer snippet. Save the file. So again, press on tabs, new folder. This is for the post. So again, I'm going to say index.js, the main file for the post, uh, RNFES to get the short answer snippet. Alright, so now we have set up three things that is the home, network and post. So all of these three folders are basically included in the stack, like they are included in their specific stack. That is home is going to have its own home stack, the, the network is going to have its uh, own network stack and the post is going to have its own post stack if, if at all there are any more screens present. Right, so now we need the tabs to be shown, right? So we have this folder that is tabs. So for this particular folder, there is no layout as you can see, right? There's only layout for the home currently. So I'm going to press on tabs and I'm going to create layout for that particular folder. So I'm going to press a new file and I'm going to create the underscore layout.js. Okay. So R N F E S to get the short answer snippet. Okay. So over here, we're going to start defining our code for the tabs. Okay. So let's look into this. So firstly, I'm going to remove everything. Actually, this is not required. So firstly, let's import our tabs from the expo router. So I'm going to say import tabs from expo router. All right. So here I'm going to write export default function layout. So firstly, here I'm going to say return the tabs component. Okay, we're going to define the first tab. So it's going to be tabs dot screen. So the name is going to be home. That's the first one. And we're going to provide the options that we used to do earlier in the earlier projects. Okay, so options. So the first option is going to be tab bar label. That's going to be home tab bar label style. We're going to give it a specific color of this color code 008E97. All right, and after the tab bar label style, we are going to say header shown is going to be false for this. And we have the tab bar icon, which is going to take in a prop that is if at all the icon is focused or not. So depending on if it is focused or not, we're going to show different icons. So here I'm going to say if it is focused, then show some icon else we're going to show some different icon. So if at all it's focused, we're going to show the uh, uh, home icon that is from let's let's search the home icon in the X Y icons over here. So if it is focused, it's going to be from N typo. So import the icon family. And uh, copy it under component code and we're going to paste it over here. And if at all it is not focused again, the home icon, but the outlined version of it that is from and design. So firstly, import the icon family. We're going to paste it over there and copy the render component code and paste it over here. 
okay so that's it about the first tab so i'm just going to copy this a couple of times for the network as well as the post okay so for the second one the name is going to be network all right and uh, tab bar label also we're going to change it's to be network and we're going to change the icons right so it's going to be people icon so we're going to choose from ion icons yeah let's choose this copy the new component code and if at all it's focused we're going to change this one and if it's not we're going to choose the outlined version that is this one and icons is already imported so i'm just going to change the icon over here and for the last one we have is the post so we're going to choose basically uh the icon the name is going to be plus square that is from and design and design is already imported so if it is uh, focused we're going to make use of this one else we're going to make use of the other one okay sorry this is the focused one so yes and the other one was the outlined one that is if it is not focused we're going to use this one it's going to come over here okay so that's it so as as soon as i save the file you should be seeing the tabs coming up if at all everything is done correctly so format once and then we're going to save the file okay screen names must be unique so yeah for the last one we have not uh, changed it to post so post over here post over here as well save the file okay so as you can see so currently we are not able to see for the post as well as the network because we do not have any kind of layout structured for that particular post tab as well as for the network tab so we are going to create a new file inside of the post uh, folder that is going to be the layout so here i'm going to say underscore layout.js so this post also is going to be in the form of the stack right so here firstly i'm going to say import a stack from expo router so here i'm going to write export default function layout basically return that stack component and for now i'm just going to show the first one that is going to be the stack dot screen name is of course going to be index that's going to be the first screen that is already present over here in the post folder so save the file so now i'm just going to do the same thing for the network as well so network new file underscore layout dot js so firstly i'm going to import my stack so import stack from expo router just like this and here i'm going to write export default function layout so here basically we're going to return the stack i'm just going to paste in the code for this okay let's also simultaneously create one more uh, file that is the connections so press on network new file i'm going to say connections.js so r n f e s together short and snippet for the connections save the file and we're going to save the file over here as well so now i'm just going to reload the app hopefully we should be seeing all of the tabs correctly yep so now as you can see everything is working absolutely fine this is the home tab this is the network tab and this is the post tab okay so yep the tab the, the tabs have been set up correctly so now the next step is firstly we're going to design the network screen 
so now i'm gonna create a bunch of users in the back end you can create a dumb some dummy users in the back end and after that we're gonna fetch all of the users over here in the network tab and later we're gonna write the endpoints that we can connect with each other and we should also show uh, any different connections that are coming from other people to our particular profile okay so firstly i'm just gonna create some users in the back end and then come back okay so i've just created few users in my back end as you can see there are nine users i've added my own details as well as my image url okay you can create this and then we're gonna come back to the api folder into the index.js file and then we, we're gonna define two endpoints one to get the users profile and then the other one is to fetch all of the users except the logged in user so here i'm gonna say a users profile So with the help of the get method, I'm going to say app.get, the endpoint is going to be forward slash profile, forward slash user ID. Okay, it's going to be basically a async method, which is going to take the request and the response in the callback. So firstly here, I'm going to initialize my try catch block. So catch error, I'm going to say result dot status of 500 dot JSON with the message being error retrieving the user profile all right so inside the try block firstly to we need access to the user id so here i'm going to say const user id equals to request dot params dot user id so here I'm gonna write const user equals to wait user dot find uh, find by id of this particular user id. All right. So if at all there is no user, we're gonna send the result. If at all there is no user. So here I'm gonna say return result dot status of four not four dot json with the message being user not found and if at all there is a user matching with this particular user id then in that case i'm going to say result dot status of 200 dot json send me that particular user with the details that's it okay so this is the endpoint to fetch the user's profile so now the next thing is we're going to write the endpoint to show all of the users which are logged in except the logged in user id so here i'm going to say app.get forward slash users forward slash user id you're going to make use of the async method over here so async it's going to take in the request and the response over here in the callback and firstly we're going to initialize our try catch block so catch of error Firstly, I'm going to give a console.log message which says error retrieving users and just show me that error. And apart from that, I'm going to send the result. So result.status of 500.json with the message being error retrieving users. Okay, so inside the try block, firstly, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna need the access to the logged in user ID. So here I'm gonna say const logged in user ID equals to requested params dot user ID. So apart from you know excluding the logged in user ID profile, we're also gonna exclude the profile uh, whom we connect with. That is, uh, once we connect with a particular person that particular person's profile it's not going to be shown in the network page okay so we're going to look into that as well so after accessing this firstly i'm going to say const logged in user so here i'm going to write the comment basically firstly i'm going to say fetch the logged in users connection so here i'm going to say const logged in user equals to await access the user model user dot find by id of the logged in user id
okay with the help of the populate method we're gonna get the connections as well as the id so here i'm gonna say connections as well as the underscore id so here i'm gonna say if at all there is no logged in user then over here we're gonna write i mean we're gonna send the result so i'm gonna say return result dot status of 400 dot json with the message being user not found okay save the file so the next step is we're gonna get basically the ids of the connected users so get the ids of all of the connected users and to to get that it's gonna be cons connected user ids equals to the logged in user dot connections we're gonna map over it and for every connection okay so for every connection basically i just want the connection dot underscore id okay so all of the ids are going to get stored inside of the connected user ids so now the next step is we're going to say find the users who are not connected to the logged in user id okay and these users are only going to be shown in the network tab okay i mean in the network page so here i'm going to say const users equals to await access the model user dot find so here basically user dot find and we're going to access the underscore id so here we're going to make use of the operator that is dollar any that is not equal to it should not be equal to the logged in user id the first one and also we are going to use a second operator that is nin that is not in so not in connected user ids that is this particular one okay so after doing that we're just going to send the result in the uh, in the status so result dot status of 200 dot json of basically the users so format once so this is going to be connected user ids not connected user id so now let's head over to the network uh, tab that is index.js file and let's start designing our network screen so firstly i'm going to initialize my user effect inside of my network screen to set the user id all right so before that i'm going to install one dependency that is J jwt decode so let's go to the terminal and i'm going to say yarn add jwt decode all right this has been installed so now i'm going to initialize my user effect to set my user id or to fetch the user id of the logged in user okay so firstly i'm going to initialize my state to hold the user id all right so here i'm going to say const user id comma set user id equals to use state and i'm going to provide an uh, initially empty string okay and let's also you know import use state from react just like this and over here inside my use effect i'm going to initialize my function let's say fetch user equals to a arrow function so firstly i'm going to get access to my token so here i'm going to say const token equals to await async storage dot get item and 
the key is going to be auth token that was set previously so let's you know import async storage from that particular dependency or i think it is already there instead of the login screen let's just get that that is this one i'm gonna paste it over here all right so after setting the token i'm gonna say const decoded token equals to jwt underscore decode of that particular token we also have to import jwt decode from jwt decode we're going to do that manually over here so i'm going to say import jwt underscore decode from jwt decode okay so this is going to take in basically the token itself and it's going to give us the user id so i'm going to say const user id equals to decoded token dot user id and after we get access to the user id i'm just going to say set the user id to be that particular user id so after this i'm going to call the function that is fetch user okay so i'm just going to you know console.log the user id and check if everything is working correctly or not so let's go over here and i'm going to save the file let's head over to the network tab once okay unexpected uh i think we need to make use of uh async because we have the error which says unexpected reserve wait wait so here i'm going to make this uh, async function save the file and let's head over to the network tab use effect does not exist let's import use effect and uh, let's go to the network tab and as you can see this is my user id so let's check if this is the exact same user id in the back end that is 652 ending with d26 so let's head over to the mongodb and as you can see 652 d26 so this is the correct user id of my user profile so that is done so now the next step is we're going to fetch the details of my profile that is this one okay so to do that firstly i'm going to initialize one more user fact okay so here i'm going to say use effect so the endpoint for this is just done previously right so inside the use effect i'm going to check the condition that if at all we have the user id then only we're going to call this function that is fetch user profile okay if we do not do this then automatically we are going to call this function that is fetch user profile and if you do not have access to user id then we're going to get the error right so this is, this is also going to have the dependency that is user id that is when the user id changes then please call this function fetch user profile so here i'm going to define the function that is const fetch user profile equals to a async function so here firstly we're going to make the call that is by make firstly let's initialize the try catch block so here i'm going to say console.log of error uh, saying error fetching user profile okay with that particular error so inside the try block firstly i'm going to initialize my response so i'm going to say const response equals to wait initialize our axios import axios from axios okay so let's do it manually over here so import axios from axios and here I'm going to say uh, await axios dot with the help of get method. This is going to be the URL that is HTTP forward slash localhost forward slash 3000. That's the port we have chosen. And it's going to go to the profile and it's going to uh, go to the user ID. Firstly, let's make use of backticks. So access the user ID. Okay. So once we do this, I'm going to say const user data equals to response dot response dot data dot user all right so firstly let's initialize our state to hold the user profile so i'm going to say over here const user comma set const user comma set user equals to use state 
it's going to be empty at the initial state all right and over here once we have got access to the user data here i'm going to say set user to be of the user data okay that's it and yep let's uh, check this out if everything is working fine so here at the bottom i'm going to say console.log the user so let's refresh once and save the file okay we're getting undefined yeah so as you can see we have all of the details of my profile so now the next step is firstly we're gonna also uh, initialize one more user fact to fetch all of the connections except the logged in user so basically we're gonna show all of the profiles over here right so to do that I'm gonna initialize one more user fact so use effect uh, over here uh, again I'm gonna write the same uh, kind of condition that is if at all we have the user ID here I'm gonna say if at all we have the user ID then go ahead and call the function that is fetch users okay so over here it's gonna have the dependency that is user ID so now let's define this function that is uh, fetch users so here I'm gonna say const fetch users equals to a async function all right so here I'm gonna say firstly let's initialize our try catch block so catch of error so console.log I'm gonna say error fetching the users and that particular error okay so inside the try block firstly let's initialize our axios so axios dot get method this is going to be the url that is http forward slash localhost 3000 forward slash users forward slash user id okay so after apply i mean after executing this i'm going to apply the the then method which is going to give us the response to us so over here i'm just going to say set the users to be the response dot data so firstly let's initialize our state to hold the users all right so i'm going to say const users comma set users equals to use state so we have n number of user connections i mean n number of users so it's going to be an empty array at the initial state okay so over here set users is going to be response dot data all right so yep that's it so let's format once and if at all there is any error we're gonna catch that so catch of error i'm just gonna say console.log of the error that's it so yep let's you know try and see if everything is working fine okay i think there is an error over here i think we have missed out the arrow i guess Uh, I think there is a bracket error over here as well so okay I think let's remove this I mean let's actually re remove the try catch block because we are actually you know uh, catching the error over here itself so that is not required I guess yep I think that's looking better so format once and uh, yeah let's try and console.log the users if at all we are getting the correct list okay so yep save the file and uh, okay it's currently showing empty okay so as you can see we have all of the users over here except my user profile so we would get to know once we design the network page so let's continue designing this so firstly let's come into the return block and we are going to make use of the scroll view so initialize that import that from react native so inside the view i mean inside the return block use the scroll view like this and we're going to give the style for the scroll view firstly it's going to have a flex of one and it's going to have a background color of white okay so inside the scroll view firstly we're going to initialize a pressable import that from react native so it's going to have the text and the icon which is going to say manage my network all 
all right so over here uh, we're gonna have uh, basically one more icon towards the text i mean after the text uh, that's gonna be the arrow right icon so let's head over to basically the expo icons that is over here and we're gonna search for arrow right okay so that's gonna be this one firstly we're gonna import the icon family as usual so we're gonna paste it at the top over here and we're gonna copy the render component code and we're gonna come back and we're gonna paste it right after the text over here okay so firstly let's give the style to the pressable so i'm gonna say style so it's gonna have a margin top let's say margin top of 10 and we have margin horizontal of 10 all right and we're gonna give a flex direction of row so flex direction of row align items of center and we're gonna say justify content of space between okay so yep let's save the file once let's go to the network tab yeah so as you can see we're able to see that working so yeah so after that we're gonna have a kind of divider being designed so for that i'm gonna initialize my self and closing view and we're gonna give it and we're gonna give the style to this over here so over here firstly we're gonna give it a border color so i'm gonna say border color of this color code e0 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 and a border width of 2 and we're gonna give it a margin vertical as well this margin vertical of 10 so here yeah as you can see that's looking fine so for the text over here we're going to give the style that is manage my network so firstly i'm going to give it a font size of 16 and we're going to give it a font weight of 600 all right and yep let's decrease this to be 22 okay so yeah as you can see that's looking better so now after that we have one more piece of view that is going to have the invitations so over here we're going to have the text okay so here i'm going to say invitations currently i'm just going to hard code the value that's going to be zero and after that we have again the same icon that is arrow right icon all right and i'm going to give the same piece of styling to the text that is over here and for this also same piece of styling for the view copy that out and paste it over here so format once and we can save the file save the file so let's go back over here as you can see that's looking better so now again i'm going to copy this piece of code that is basically the divider and paste it over here so yeah i think that's looking good so now uh, we're going to come back to the next piece of design we're going to say view so here i'm just going to comment down some comments that is basically going to say show all of the uh, request connections we're going to do this in the later part okay so after that we're going to continue with the styling so here i'm going to initialize my view and it's going to contain another piece of view inside of it which contains the text okay so the text is going to say uh, grow your network faster all right and it's going to have the icon that's basically the cross icon so copy this piece of code and we're going to paste it over here and uh, i mean copy the render component and we're going to paste it just after the text and we're going to give the style for this view or the most view that is basically some margin horizontal so it comes in correct format margin horizontal of 15 and for this view i'm going to say style flex direction of row align items of center okay and i'm going to say justify content of space between so save the file 
all right so yep that's looking fine uh now i'm gonna give one more piece of uh text that is gonna come after the view over here so i'm gonna say text here i'm gonna say find and contact the right people and it's gonna say let's see who's viewed your profile okay so firstly let's save the file all right so now the next step is we're gonna initialize one more view over here and we're gonna have a text which says try premium and we're gonna give the style to the text over here so style here i'm gonna say background color of this color code ffc72c and it's gonna have a specific width of 140 and some padding horizontal as well so padding horizontal of 10 padding vertical of 5 some border radius as well so border radius of 25 and margin top of 8 so yep that's looking okay so now for the text i'm gonna give the style so here it's gonna be a text align of center and a basically color of white and a font weight of let's say 600 okay so yep i think that's looking better so now the next step is we're going to show all of the list of the users okay apart from the logged in user so for that i'm going to make use of the flat list so initiate the flat list import it from react native okay so this is going to take in of course the data in our case it's going to be the users that's obtained from the use effect so the next is the render item component render item prop which is going to take in basically the item itself and in this case firstly i'm going to you know in, uh, initialize a component firstly create the components at the root level so app.js new folder components folder and i'm going to say user profile so user profile.js so r and fts to get the shorthand snippet for the user profile so save the file let's come back to the network i mean to the index.js of the network folder here i'm gonna import that particular user profile from the components folder and this is gonna take in some values okay that is basically the item itself and later we'll be sending uh, basically the key i think let's also give the key now itself so key so here i'm gonna say key is gonna be index so format once and we have one more piece of information the prop that is basically the column wrapper style so column wrapper style is gonna be justify content of space between okay and i want it to be in two columns so number of columns is gonna be two okay and we have the key extractor as well so let's write that out so key extractor that's gonna take in the item and it's gonna be item dot underscore id yep that's done so let's just save the file once so as you can see it is in two columns and we are seeing all of the user profiles being displayed so let's come to the user profile and then start designing and showing the required details so firstly let's you know destructure the props that is the item and over here firstly inside the view i'm gonna have my view this is gonna contain the image of the user of that particular user import image from react native and let's provide the source to this so source is gonna be it's gonna take in the uri and it's gonna be item dot profile image okay and let's provide the style to this over here so style it's gonna have a width of 90 
and it's going to have a height of 90 and it's going to have a border radius of 45 just to make it look circular and I'm going to say resize mode of cover so format once and we're going to save the file so as you can see we're able to see all of the user profiles except my profile okay because of the endpoint we have written previously so now I'm going to give this style for the outermost view with some specific height and width with some responsiveness being applied so style basically a flex of one uh, border radius of nine border radius of nine and it's gonna have a margin horizontal let's say 16 and it's gonna have a specific border color of this color code that is e0 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 and it's gonna have a border width as well of one and it's gonna have margin vertical margin vertical of 10 justify content of center okay so format once and apart from this we're going to firstly import dimensions from react native so i'm going to say dimensions so we're going to provide finally the height and width value so height is going to be dimensions dot get of window okay dot height dot height divided by four all right and for the width also we're going to give it so it's going to be dimensions dot get window of width minus 80 by 2 not the sum let's remove the semicolon so again we need to put one more parenthesis over here and apply the comma all right so let's remove the flex that's not required i guess so yeah let's save the file once okay so i think it's it's actually taking up a lot of height okay i think yeah we actually forgot to give the by four i think it got removed i guess so height by four save the file so yeah now it's looking better all right so now we're gonna go to this view that's gonna contain the image i'm gonna provide a style to this basically the justify content of center okay and align items of center so it comes to the center part center part of the container so yes that's looking good and after that after this view we're gonna have one more piece of view that's basically going to contain the descriptions so initialize the text so firstly i'm going to access the name it's going to be item dot name okay we're able to see that coming on the screen so for this i'm going to give this style so i'm going to say text align of center font size of 16 and a font weight of bold okay or let's keep it to be 600 yeah 600 is looking good and uh, yeah for this view we're gonna give it some margin top margin top of 10 yes that's looking fine so after that after the user's name we're gonna give the description so for now i'm just gonna hard code it so once the user you know enters the description in the profile page then we are gonna make it look dynamic so here i'm gonna say something like this engineer graduate and a linkedin member okay so save the file and we're gonna give uh, some piece of styling to this text so let's say style over here so text align of center okay and we're gonna give it some margin left so margin left of one margin top of two yeah that's looking nice and finally we have the button to be shown that is the connect button that's going to come after this view so initialize the pressable for that 
imported import principle from react native so this text is going to say connect so firstly we're going to give the style for the auto most pressable so we're going to say margin left of auto and margin right of auto as well okay and we're going to give basically the border color it's going to be this color code that is 0072b1 uh, and apart from that we are going to give the border width to be 1 and we're going to give it a border radius as well border radius of 25 some margin top of 7 and some padding vertical and horizontal so padding horizontal of 15 and some vertical spacing so padding vertical of so let's format once and let's also you know give the style for the connect as well so i'm going to say style so basically it's going to have a font weight of 600 font weight of 600 and uh, yep color also we're going to give the same piece of color the blue color one over here and save the file so as you can see it's looking perfectly good with the connect button okay so now the next step is we're going to write few endpoints to you know connect with the other user and after doing that we're going to initialize the on press event on the connect button and then we're going to send a connection request to any particular user and implement that so firstly let's head back to the index.js file and then we're going to write few endpoints i mean over here few endpoints to you know connect to any particular user in the network page so here i'm going to say app.post it's going to be forward slash connection request and it's going to be the async method with the request and the response in the callback and firstly we're going to initialize our try catch block so catch of error so here uh, firstly i'm going to say result dot status 500 dot json with a message being error creating connection request okay something like this so here we need access to two things one is the current user id and the selected user id so i'm going to say cons current user id comma selected user id equals to request dot body okay so uh, here firstly i'm going to say await user dot find by id and update so here we are going to uh, select basically the selected user id selected user id is the person who is going to receive the connection request okay so for this person we are going to update the connection requests array in the back end so here I'm going to say I'm going to make it to the push operator so dollar push update the connection requests of the selected user ID and inside the connection requests you need to put the person who has sent the request that is going to be current user ID so just put that over here so current user ID okay so let's just check if we have written the correct spelling in the users connection requests yep that's correct so after that we are also going to update the sent friend requests array that is the person who is sending the request to the other person so i'm going to say await user dot find by id and update so here we're going to update the current user id so for the current user ID, we're going to update the send connection requests. So again, I'm going to do the similar thing, make use of the push operator. And here I'm going to say send connection requests. And inside that, we're going to add the ID of the person we are sending the connection request to. That is going to be selected user ID, right? So copy that out and paste it over here. And that's it. And here I'm going to say result send status of 200. Okay, so that's pretty much it about sending a connection request to a 
particular person so i'm going to say send a connection request so now the next step is we're going to uh, show i mean we're going to write the endpoint for uh, the the connection request i mean the person who whom we are connected with uh, in this particular app okay so we're going to show all of the connections so here i'm going to say endpoint endpoint to show all of the connections right so over here firstly i'm going to make use of the get method so i'm going to say app dot get over here and it's going to be forward slash connection request and it's going to be user id so it's going to be the async method with the request and the response inside the callback and here i'm going to initialize my try catch block so catch of error and here i'm going to say console.log of whatever error that is and i'm going to send the result dot status of 500 dot json with a message being let's say internal server error, something like this right so inside the try block firstly we need access to the user id to fetch the connections of that particular user id so here i'm going to say const user id equals to request dot params okay so here i'm going to fetch the document basically so i'm going to say const user equals to await access the user model i'm going to say await user dot find by id of the user id and i'm going to apply the populate method to this so i'm going to say dot populate and we need basically access to the connection requests so i'm going to say connection requests i mean okay i think this is not, uh, not the correct comment so endpoint to show all the connection requests all right so inside the manage my network over there we will be showing all of the connections so here i'm going to say populate connection requests all right and uh, inside this i need access to uh, three things that is the name email and the profile image of the user so i'm going to say profile image okay and i'm going to apply the lean method on this i'm going to say dot lean so that's pretty much it and after you know initializing this piece of statement i'm going to say const connection requests uh, const connection requests equals to user dot connection requests and i'm just going to send this in the json so i'm going to say result dot json of the connection requests so that's pretty much it to you know show all of the connection requests of a particular user who is logged in and now the next thing we'll be writing is we're going to write the endpoint to accept a particular friend request uh, or a connection request so here i'm going to say uh, endpoint to accept a connection request so this we have already done in the previous app if you would check it out we're going to do it in the similar way so i'm going to say app dot post over here uh, it's going to be forward slash connection request forward slash accept and it's going to be the async method with the request and the response so firstly let's initialize our try catch block so catch of error all right so over here firstly i'm going to say console.log of whatever that error is and here i'm going to write result dot status of 500 dot json with a message being internal server error all right so inside the try block firstly we need access to two things the sender id and the recipient id so i'm going to say const sender id comma recipient id equals to the request dot body all right so firstly we're gonna receive i mean firstly we're gonna fetch the doc fetch the documents of the sender as well as the recipient so i'm gonna say const sender equals to await user dot find by id of the sender id okay and i'm gonna say const recipient equals to await user dot find by id of the recipient id all right so save the file and after that i'm going to just modify the connections array of both of the sender and the recipient right so to modify that i'm going to say access the sender document and go into the connections of it 
so connections is basically an array that we have defined in the schema so here i'm going to say sender.connections.push dot push the recipient id so similarly we need to push the other id into the recipient that is the sender id so here i'm going to say recipient recipient dot connections dot push of basically the sender id so basically we are trying to push each other's id into the connections array as you can see since we are connected with each other if at all you press on the connect button i mean if you if, if at all you press on the tick mark button where we're going to show it just below the invitations okay so after doing that we're going to modify the connection requests as well as the send connection requests of both of the sender and the recipient so to do that i'm going to say a recipient dot connection requests recipient is a person who's going to uh, you know receive the requests and sender is going to uh, sender is a person who's going to send the request so over here for recipient i'm going to say recipient dot connection requests equals to recipient dot connection requests dot i'm going to apply the filter method so for every request here i'm going to say request dot to string convert into this should not be equal to the sender or id dot to string okay so by this way after we have pressed on the tick mark button something like that we're going to modify this i mean we're going to filter that particular id out of the connection requests so we're going to say recipient dot connection requests equals to recipient dot uh, recipient dot connection requests dot apply the filter method and for every request we're going to say request dot to string should not be equally equal to the send id dot to string so similarly we're going to do the same thing for the recipient as well so here i'm going to say i mean for the sender as well so here so for the sender it's going to be different it's going to be send connection requests so i'm going to say sender dot send connection requests equals to sender dot send connection requests dot again apply the filter method for this so for each request over here i'm going to say request dot to string should not be equal equal to the uh, where did that go okay so request dot to string should not be equal equal to the recipient id dot to string that is this one so yep so that's the code for the next statement okay so after doing this we are going to basically save this particular data to the backend so to do that i'm going to say await sender document dot save and similarly await recipient uh, documents dot save and after that i'm going to say result dot status of uh, 200 dot json we're going to send the message over here i'm going to say message is going to be a friend request accepted uh, successfully something like this okay so this is basically the end points to accept a friend request i mean to our connection request okay hope you got this part so i think that's it so now the next step is we're going to go into the front end part and then we're going to create a on press function on basically this connect button okay so let's head over to i think that is that inside of the user profile and then we're going to create a on press function on the connect button so here i'm going to say on press it's going to take in a function and we're going to initialize a new function let's say send connection request and it's going to take in two things firstly the user id and then the item dot underscore id okay so here i'm going to say user id and item dot underscore id so i think we uh, we can also you know get the user id from the props so over here i'm going to write user id and then i'm going to go back to my network uh, i mean index.js uh, file and where we have the user profile i'm going to send basically the user id so we already have the user id calculated over here okay with the help of this function so i'm just going to send that as the parameter so user id is going to be user id so i'm just going to refresh the app once save the file so let's go to the network tab okay wrong spelling over here user id
all right so now let's try accessing this particular uh, this particular user id in our user profile so in the components user profile let's just console.log of the user id console.log user id so let's save the file so as you can see we're able to see my user id over here so let's remove that so it's working correctly so over here yeah we have initialized the function that is send connection request of the user id and the item dot underscore id so let's define the function at the top so i'm going to say const send connection request equals to async function it's going to take in two things that we previously went through that is current user id and the selected user id all right so here firstly i'm going to initialize my try catch block so catch of error i'm going to say console.log of error with that particular error message and inside the try block firstly i'm going to initialize my response so i'm going to say const response equals to await fetch of this particular url that is http localhost 3000 forward slash it's going to be connection request so let's go into the index.js file it's going to be this one so copy that out and we're going to go back to the user profile and i'm going to paste it over here okay and we're going to pass in some more options that is basically method it's going to be a post we're going to pass in the headers that is content type application forward slash json and apart from that we're going to pass in of course the body so over here i'm going to say body we're going to say json dot stringify both the things that is current user id and the selected user id so here i'm going to check if at all the response is okay so here i'm going to say if response dot okay if response dot okay then i'm going to write set uh, the connection sent to be true so currently we do not have the state for this so i'm going to initialize the state over here that is const connection const connection sent comma set connection sent equals to use state and initially i'm going to pass in false over here all right so make sure you import use state from react just like this and uh, yep so uh, if the response is okay i'm going to say set connection sent to be true so pretty much that's it so save the file so now we're going to make some ui changes that is if at all i press on the connect button over here we need to show it as pending until and unless the other person accepts our request okay so once the person accepts our request obviously we are filtering out that particular person from this list right we have written the endpoint for that as well so now i'm going to come back over here and then i'm just gonna make some ui changes with the help of the style so basically for border color i'm gonna write it one more time so here firstly i'm gonna check if at all the connection is sent or or if at all the item that is coming from the props for that particular person dot i'm gonna go to their connection requests okay so connection requests okay so if the connection requests includes my particular id that is the person who has sent the request to that person so with the help of includes method i'm going to access my user id user id this also is coming from the props as you can see all right so i'm going to say if there is if the connection is sent or or if the item dot connection requests dot includes the user id then it's going to be in gray color else it's going to be the blue color that is 007b21 i mean 72b1 let's uh, remove this border color that's not required okay so this is one change required that is for the outermost uh, pressable 
we're also going to make the change for okay i think uh, instead of the question mark we need to put the colon yep now it's looking better okay so for uh, now uh, the next ui change is in the text okay so over here uh, i'm going to make the change so basically color is going to be this so i'm just going to copy same piece of condition and i'm going to paste it for the color all right so if at all the connection is sent or or if at all the item dot connection requests includes the user id then it's going to be gray color else it's going to be the blue color itself that is currently present so same thing over here also so if at all this connection matches i mean if they, i mean if at all this uh, particular statement is true then over here instead of connect it should be pending until unless uh, until unless the other person accepts your request else it's going to be connect so connect so format once nothing should be changed because you have not yet you know sent a request all right so now we're going to try this out so i'm going to press connect on the first person and let's see if at all we are able to see the ui change and if at all the ids are being correctly pushed into uh, each other's connection requests and the send connection requests all right so yeah let's press on the first connect button okay so as you can see it's come into the pending state i think hopefully we uh, we have sent the connection request let's just check that out in the back end part so i'm going to go over here so this is my user id so okay so i'm just going to refresh once okay so in my profile i need to look into the send connection requests okay so this person's id should be there there is 652 and ending with 8 ft let's check that out so as you can see 652 8 ft and in this person's you know connection requests my uh, id should be there that is 652 ending with d26 so over uh, here connection requests as you can see 652 d26 so we have successfully sent the connection request that part is done so now the next step is we uh, i'm going to log in through this person's account now in just a bit and after that we are going to initiate on press i mean we are going to show basically all of the connections just below the invitations right so i'm just going to log out and then log in with this person's user profile and then come back so now i'm just currently logged in with the other profile okay so now the next step is i'm going to go into my index.js of the network folder and here we're going to initialize one more function to fetch all of our friend requests so to so to do that firstly i'm going to remove this out and here i'm going to initialize my use effect right and again it's going to be the similar way first we're going to check if at all there is any user id present then in that case only i want you to execute this function that is fetch friend requests all right so let's define this at the bottom over here so i'm going to say const fetch friend requests equals to async function it's going to take in the request and the response and here firstly i'm going to initialize my try catch block so catch of error i'm going to say console.log the error message okay so inside the try block i'm going to initialize my response first so i'm going to say const response equals to await initialize axios so import axios from axios and axios dot we're going to make use of the get method and this is going to be the url that is http forward slash local host 3000 and forward slash it's going to be connection request let's check that out yeah connection request and then the user id so connection request and forward slash user id so yep this is the one and uh, yep after this we're going to say if at all the response dot status equals equals to 200 which means success then over here firstly i'm going to say const connection requests a connection requests equals to 
for connection request data equals to response dot data we're gonna map over it and for every friend request or connection request we're gonna fetch the required details first of all underscore id that's gonna be friend request dot underscore id and we want the name so it's gonna be friend request dot name and after that we have the email that is gonna be friend request dot email and finally we need access to the image so it's gonna be friend request dot image so these are the required things for us so I'm not sure why this is uh, having three dots response okay wrong spelling for response okay so I think I forgot the comma over here yeah so that's it so after we do that firstly we need access to the state to hold the connection requests so here at the top I'm gonna say const connection requests comma set connection requests equals to use state of an empty array at the initial state okay so once we have come over here I'm gonna say set the friend requests to be connection requests data okay that's it so hopefully we should be seeing okay set friend requests is the spelling wrong okay my bad set connection requests so over here all right so let's you know try and console.log the friend requests so my profile should come in the console hopefully if everything is correct okay not friend requests connection requests okay so over here i'm gonna say connection requests so let's save the file and i think we have an error nope okay we have an error axios error request fail with status code 500 so let's look into where we've gone wrong so over here okay i'm not sure why i've taken request and result in the callback that's not required let's format once so let's look into the index file once okay and let's check if uh, i mean let's check for the correct endpoint that is connection request if at all there is anything wrong okay endpoint to show all of the connection requests okay so here while fetching okay we have uh, written it in the wrong way because we have written two times a wait i think that's the mistake let's remove that and now let's you know format once and save the file let's come back to the index.js okay i'm just gonna refresh the app hopefully we should be seeing the correct result network yeah we are getting the correct result id email image is undefined okay why is that so friend request dot image let's see the post ones i mean let's see the schema ones for image it's gonna be okay profile image not image so profile image so over here instead of image i'm gonna say profile image and save the file so network yep so we are getting the email image and the name as well so with the help of this we're gonna map over it and then show the request just below the invitations block so let's come back over here that is after this view yeah we have already done the comment over here so I'm gonna remove that out and here I'm gonna say connection requests dot map for every item and index I'm gonna create a new component basically that is connection request okay so come to the components folder where is that over here create a new file that is connection request.js 
R N F E S to get the shorthand snippet. Save the file, and over here I'm just gonna import it. Item comma index now dot. Import the connection request from the components folder. And to this we're gonna send some details. That is basically the item itself, and key is gonna be index. We're gonna send the connection request. Connection requests equals to connection requests and set connection requests. Also, we are gonna send equals to set connection requests. Apart from that, I'm also gonna send the user ID as well. Okay, so I'm gonna save the file. So let's come back to the network tab. And as you can see, we have one connection because we have one connection request being shown on the screen. So let's go to the connection request tab, I um, mean to the component and then uh, import the required things that is item, uh, connection requests and set connection requests as well as the user ID. Okay, so firstly, we're gonna start designing the uh, this component right so I'm gonna remove this text firstly and for the view I'm gonna give some basic styling I'm gonna give it basically margin horizontal of 15 and margin vertical of 5 okay and I'm gonna initialize my image inside of the view or firstly inside the view I mean inside the view I'm gonna initialize my image tag so it's gonna take in the source and then the URI it's gonna be item dot image let's give the style for the image so that it's uh, seen on the screen so style uh, we're gonna give it a specific width and height width of 50 and a height of 50 let's import image from react native as such like this and apart from that I'm gonna give a border radius of 25 so it looks exactly circular and uh, I'm gonna format once and save the file okay as you can see my profile image is being seen so after the image I'm gonna have one more piece of text uh, with the username so I'm gonna say item dot name is inviting you to connect okay so this is gonna have a specific width that is for the text I'm gonna give it a width of 200 so even if it overflows it's gonna get into the next line okay so as you can see that's looking better so now after that firstly let's give the style to this particular view I'm gonna say style flex direction of row align items of center and I'm gonna give it a gap of 7 over here okay that's looking cool so after that I mean after the text we're gonna uh, show one more piece of view just like this and again this is gonna have one more piece of view which is gonna contain the icon so we're gonna choose the cross icon first let's head over over here yeah we're gonna choose the same one import it from n typo or we're gonna choose let's say from feather Yeah, this one so import the icon family and copy the render component code we're gonna paste the icon over here all right so let's give the style for the outermost view so I'm gonna say style it's gonna have a specific width of 36 height of 36 and it's basically gonna have a border radius so I'm gonna say border radius of uh, 18 to make it look circular and it's gonna have a background color of this color code E0, E0, E0 and I'm gonna say justify content of center and align items of center as well. So align items of center. I'm gonna format once and the size of this is gonna be 22. So save the file 
so as you can see we are able to see that cross button on the screen so i'm just going to copy this particular inner view one more time and then make the changes for the icon so the next one is basically going to be the check mark icon so i'm going to search for check so it's going to be check mark outline yeah it's going to be this one so import the iron icons first over here and import the main copy the render component code and instead of feather you're going to paste this one with the size of 22 okay so instead of the view it's going to be pressable because we're going to uh, initiate a on press event on this to accept the request import pressable from react native like this and uh, yep that's it so save the file so now let's give the style for this view which contains both of the icons so i'm going to say flex direction of row align items of center and i'm going to give it a gap of seven okay yep i think that's looking nice and we're going to change the icon color for this one for the tick mark icon it's going to be that blue color that is zero zero seven two b one okay yeah that's looking nice and uh, yep that's it so we have you know designed the connection request so now the next step is we're gonna you know initialize the on press function on the pressable icon and then we're gonna initiate a new function to accept the request so firstly let's create on press function on the pressable over here so here i'm gonna say on press so it's gonna take in a function and we're gonna say accept connection of basically the item dot underscore id so at the top we're gonna we're gonna define this function that is accept connection so over here i'm gonna say const accept connection equals to a async function that's gonna basically take in the request id so here I'm going to say request ID. So firstly, here I'm going to initialize my try catch block. So try catch of error. Here I'm going to say console.log of whatever that particular error is. All right, so inside the try block firstly, I'm going to initialize my response. I'm going to say await fetch. So it's basically going to be HTTP localhost forward slash uh, <coughs> 3000 forward slash. Let's check that out. We've already written the endpoint previously. Okay. So it's going to be connection request and then accept. Okay. So after forward slash, it's going to be connection request and then accept. So here we're going to pass in some props. That is basically uh, the method. method is going to be post and we're going to pass in the headers okay so here i'm going to say content type application forward slash json okay and finally we need to pass of course the body so here i'm going to say body uh, i'm going to say json dot stringify of basically the sender id send id so sender id is of course going to be this one the request id that's coming from the parameter so i'm going to say request id and the recipient id is recipient id that's going to be the user id that is coming from the props so i'm going to say user id so let's check if we've correctly written the spelling for this that is a recipient id so let's go over here okay so recipient id and the sender id all right so now after that i'm gonna check the condition that is if at all the response is okay that means if at all it's successful so i'm gonna say if response dot okay then i'm gonna say access the set connection requests so set connection requests okay 
so here basically we're gonna filter out the connected ones so I'm gonna access my connection requests that also is coming from the props so connection requests dot filter dot filter so for every request I'm gonna say this is gonna be the condition I'm gonna apply that is request dot underscore ID should not be equal equal to the uh, request ID that is coming from the prop I mean yeah that's coming from this particular parameter okay <clears throat> that's gonna be the condition so connection requests is not uh, okay connection requests okay not connection request so this is gonna be our condition so as soon as you you know press on the tick mark button we should see that being filtered out that is we should see this particular connection being filtered out so that's the reason we have said set connection requests off access the connection requests first and then with the help of the filter method i'm going to say request underscore id should not be equally equal to the request id that's coming from the parameter <coughs> for that particular connection so format once and we're going to give this a try okay so i'm going to press on the tick mark button okay there is some error property item underscore does not exist so let's check that out over here okay my bad it should be item dot underscore id yeah so now I'm, I'm just gonna press on the tick mark button once again so as you can see that uh, that particular connection is filtered out okay so now we both are currently friends so now if you refresh the app even over here my profile should be removed out because we we, we both are connected and we have written that condition that is filtering out the connection IDs as well in the previous part of the video. So let's go check out basically our uh, backend ones. So now if we check in the users collection, I'm gonna this is my profile. I'm gonna go into my connections. Okay, this person's ID should be there inside of my connections, right? So as you can see, six five two B eight FT. Okay, so if I go to the second person's connections, my ID should be there because we have just connected. So uh, connections. As you can see 652 D26 my ID is going to be 652 D26 so we have successfully you know completed this process that is how we can connect with each other okay so now the next step is we are going to show all of the connections in this particular uh, button that is manage my network so firstly I guess we need to create uh, one more page for that I guess connections.js yeah I think yeah, we already have this particular file so we're gonna make use of this and then we're gonna implement and show all of the connections of a particular user so now before starting with the design of the connections page firstly we're gonna create an endpoint to fetch all of the connections of a particular user so let's head over to the index.js file over here and over here I'm gonna say endpoints to fetch uh, fetch all the connections of a user so here I'm gonna say app I'm gonna make use of the get method so it's gonna be forward slash connections and forward slash user ID all right so it's gonna be a sync method with the request and the response in the callback so firstly I'm gonna initialize my try catch block so I'm gonna say catch of error so first of all console.log of error fetching the connections with that particular error message all right and here i'm going to say result dot status of 500 dot json with a message being error fetching the connections all right something like this and inside the try block firstly we need access to the user id so here i'm going to say const user id equals to request.params.user id so now we're going to find the user id and populate the connections field so to do that i'm going to say const user equals to await user dot find by id of the user id after finding it just populate it that is just give me the connections based on the connections i want the name profile image of the user profile i mean profile image 
as well as the created at date created at date or time okay so yep something like this and i'm gonna apply the exec function so format once and after this firstly we're gonna check the condition that if at all there is a user or not so if at all there is no user here i'm gonna say return result dot status of 404 dot json with a message with a message being so message being user is not found okay so if at all we have the user then just send it in the result so result dot status of 200 dot json and i'm just gonna send the connections array connections is gonna be user dot connections okay so that's it this is the endpoint to fetch all of the connections of the user so now let's head over to the index dot i mean uh, the, the network page okay so over here in the file tree let's head over to the network page i mean the index.js and then we're going to initialize a on press event on basically the manage my network that is over here so i'm going to say on press so firstly let's make sure our router is initialized so here i'm going to say const router equals to use router okay so make sure you import use router from the expo router and over here where we have the on press i'm just going to say router router dot push to this particular uh endpoint okay or the path it's going to be network firstly go to the network tab and then go into the connections so save the file and let's give this a try okay so come to the network firstly and as you can see now we have refreshed now my profile is not there over here because we have filtered that out based on the id okay let's press on manage my network okay so as you can see we are coming correctly to the connections page so now let's start designing our connections so let's go to the file tree let's press on connections.js and over here firstly let's initialize our use effect and fetch all of the connections so firstly i'm gonna initialize my state so i'm gonna say const connections comma set connections equals to use state and initially i'm gonna pass in an empty array because we can have n number of connections so here i'm gonna say use state all right so now i'm gonna initialize my use effect so before that i need access to my user id so i'm just gonna copy the function that we have written earlier inside of our index page okay that is okay not over here not in the home i think it's there in the uh, network to get basically this particular id oh yeah this, this is the one so by doing this we can have access to the id so let's get back to the connections paste the code over here import use effect uh, let's initialize the state to hold the user user id so const user id comma set user id equals to use state initially it's gonna be empty all right so let's make use of i mean let's import async storage as well async storage and we also need to import jwt code so to that let's head back to over here i mean the network index.js import jwt that is this one let's go back to the connections and i'm gonna paste it over here all right so by doing this we will get access to the user id so save the file okay so now what i'm going to do is firstly i'm going to initialize one more user fact so i'm going to say use effect over here and first of all i'm going to pass in the user id as a dependency we're going to do it the similar way we did it in the we did it in the previous page that is index.js of the network folder so here i'm going to say if at all there is the user id then only go and call the function that is fetch connections okay i'm going to define this function at the bottom over here so const fetch connections equals to a async method over here so async all right let's initialize our try catch block so first of all catch of error i'm going to say console.log of error inside the try block we're going to initialize our response value so i'm going to say const response equals to await axios so import axios from axios i'm going to make use of the get method 
and this is going to be the URL that is HTTP localhost for 3000 okay so forward slash connections forward slash the user ID all right and after that I'm going to say just set the connections to be a response dot data dot connections okay so yep that's it so hopefully we should be seeing just one connection because we have connected with my profile so I'm going to say console.log of connections over here. So yeah, let's save the file and let's hopefully see. Uh, we should be getting my profile. So as you can see, this is the connections array. That is basically an array of objects. And you can see my profile over here because I've logged in with the other profile. So with the help of this data, we're going to start and designing the, we're going to start designing basically this particular connections page. So first of all, for the view, I'm going to give it some basic styling. That is a flex of one and a background color of white. Okay. So after this, let's remove this text over here. I'm going to initialize my view and this view is going to contain the text which says connections, connections, just like this. And after that, we're going to have one more piece of view. All right, so inside this view, we're gonna have basically the icons, two, two icons, that is a search and the three dot icons. So over here, I'm gonna search for search. One is, let's say, we're gonna get it from and design. So import the icon family. And firstly, paste it over here. Copy the render component code. And we're gonna paste it over here inside the view. And after this, we have the next icon that is basically the three dots something like that or the three bars okay we're gonna choose this one from octi icons and firstly we're gonna import it over here at the top and we're gonna copy the render component code and we're gonna paste it over here just after the first icon and we're gonna give this style for this particular view so i'm gonna say flex direction of row and align items of uh, center so align items of center and I'm going to give it a gap of 10 and after that we're going to give the style for the outermost view that is this particular view so I'm going to say style over here so again I'm going to say similar flex direction of row align items of center and justify content of space between and I'm going to give it some margin horizontal so margin horizontal of basically 12 and margin top of 10 okay so save the file so as you can see that's looking better so row spelling is wrong it should be in small all right yep that's looking nice so over here it should basically have the connections dot length so i'm going to say connections dot length so it should uh, now it should show us one because we have only one connection okay as you can see one connections so Yep, let's increase the font weight for this. Let's say style and then font weight is going to be font weight is going to be 400. Okay, not 4000, 400 and save the file. I mean not 400, 500, sorry. Yeah, 500 is looking better. So uh, let's keep this to be 22 and then 22. So yep, apart from that, we're going to have the divider after this particular view. So I'm going to say view self and closing. Let's give the style for this. So basically I'm going to give it a height of two. I'm going to give it a border color of this color code that is E0, E0, E0. I'm going to give it a border width as well. So border width of two. Okay, so border width of two and then a slight margin top of 12. okay so yep let us save the file once and as you can see we're able to see that order being applied so now the next step is we're going to initialize the view and then map over all of the connections that we have so i'm going to say view over here and this is going to have some basic styling let's give it over here itself that is margin horizontal of 10 and it's going to have a margin top of 10. so let's map over the connection so here i'm going to say connections dot map 
for every item and the index okay i'm going to return basically a view so the first thing inside the view is i'm going to display the image so make sure you import image from react native and i'm going to give the source for the image so i'm going to say source this in turn is going to take in the uri so to access the image it's going to be item dot profile image all right so now let's give some styling to the image so that it's visible on the screen so i'm going to say style width of 48 height of 48 and it's going to have basically a border radius of 24 to make it look exactly circular so after the image firstly let's save the file so as you can see we're able to see my image on the screen let's you know uh, give the key for this so key is going to be index okay so after the image we, we're going to have basically the description values so initialize a view for that okay so over here yeah so basically here we are going to have three pieces of text so the first one is going to say item dot name that is a username so item dot name so after the text we have the second one so i'm going to say text again okay so here uh, you can actually give the description but we have not you know uh, gotten the description from the uh, uh, what do you say endpoint so here i'm just going to hard code it for now if you want you can you know get the description that is the user description once it's added or you can show basically a hard coded value so i'm going to say b tech and then computer science So we're going to install the moment so here i'm going to say gyan add moment so here after installing that i'm going to say moment import moment from moment and it's going to be item dot created at dot apply the format method and this is going to be the format value that is m m m m or d o and then y y y y so yes let's save the file so as you can see connected on october 13th 2023 okay and this is the name and this is basically uh, the uh, description value so let us format once and we're going to start giving the styles for basically the text over here so I'm gonna say style, font size of 15, and a font weight of 500. So for this, I'm gonna say style, uh, color of gray. And for the final one also, it's gonna be color of gray itself. So now I'm gonna give the style for this particular view. So I'm gonna say style, Basically, I'm going to say flex direction of a uh, column, not row, and it's going to have a gap of two. All right. So after this, we're going to have another view, which is going to contain the icons. So I'm going to say view just like this. And inside this, we have two icons. One is the dot icon and one is the send icon. So let's search for dot over here so dots uh, vertical and typo we need to import that so i'm going to say and typo and after that we have send icon from feather so copy that out and here i'm going to say feather let's import feather as well all right so so for the view i'm going to give the styling so i'm going to say style a flex direction of row align items of center gap of eight all 
all right so now we're going to give the style for the outermost view that is over here so i'm going to say style flex direction of row align items of center and let's say a gap of 10 and i'm going to give it some margin vertical as well so margin vertical of 10 okay so as you can see that's looking good and now we're going to give a flex of one to the second part of the description okay so flex of one and yep let's decrease the size of the icon to be 20 for both of them so 20 over here as well as you can see that's looking good so as and when the connections keep on adding up you will be able to see the changes over here okay so that's it about this page so now the next step we'll be looking into is we're going to start designing basically the post screen okay so that we can go ahead and post a post and that is going to be reflected in the home screen okay so firstly let's start designing the post screen so let's head over to the index.js over here and then let's look into the design of this so firstly i'm going to initialize my scroll view at the top over here so firstly let's import that and then i'm going to make use over here that is instead of the normal view okay so for the scroll view we're going to give it flex of one and the background color of white all right so let's remove this piece of text we're going to have the view so this view in turn is going to have one more view i mean two more views this is going to be the first one so over here it's going to have basically the uh and typo icon that is going to say circle with cross that is this one so import and typo first and copy the render component code and i'm going to paste it over here so apart from this we have one more piece of view inside this that's going to contain the image import image from react native so it's going to have the source and the URI okay so for now I'm just gonna hard code the URI so I'm just gonna get my URI over here I've pasted my URI so now let's give the style for the image so I'm gonna say width of 40 and a height of 40 and I'm gonna give it a border radius of 20 so now let's target the view basically a flex direction of row align items of center and a gap of seven so after the image we have one more piece of text which says anyone now we're going to give the style for this view so i'm going to say a flex direction of a flex direction of a row align items of center and a gap of 10 so now i'm just going to save the file let's go to the post okay so as you can see that's looking better so i think we do not want uh the header or we can you know change the header or configure the header let's head over to the layout.js over here so i'm going to provide some options okay so i'm going to say header title let's say post okay yep that's looking better so now let's head back to basically our index.js and styling to the text all right so yes so let's go back over here all right so now we're gonna you know uh, initialize one more view as i told this is the first one and this is the second one okay so yeah so this is going to contain again the icon that is the back in time icon and typo it's already imported so copy the render component code and paste it over here and after that we basically have a pressable import that from react native with a text attribute which says post firstly let's give you know the styling for the pressable over here so i'm going to say pressable so i mean padding is going to be 10 and we're going to give it a background color 
of this color code that is 0072B1 and we're going to give it a border radius as well so border radius of 20 and a specific width of 80 and I'm going to target the text now so I'm going to say style first of all text line of center and we're going to give it a color of white and a font weight of bold okay so as you can see that's looking okay so now uh, i'm gonna give the same piece of styling that we gave to this view as well and then make some changes we are going to give it some margin right as well to this so margin right of eight Now I'm going to give the style to the outermost view that is this one that contains both of the views. So I'm going to say style over here. Basically it's going to have a flex direction of row. Alright and it's going to have align items of center. Justify content of space between and a margin vertical of 12. Okay so let us save the file. So yeah, as you can see, that's looking better. I think instead of space between, we're gonna give it a uh, space around. So space around. Yep, I think that's looking nice. Let's you know increase the gap. Gap, I'm gonna give it 10 for the second one. So gap of 10. And uh, after that, we're gonna start styling the next part. That's gonna come after here. Here I'm going to initialize my text input first of all. So import text input from React Native, and uh, you know let's initialize our state to hold the text input. So I'm going to say const description comma set description equals to use state of an empty string at the initial state. Let's also you know import use state from react it's like this and let's go over here and then start giving the options to the text input so value is going to be description and we have the on change text over here which is going to basically say the text and here i'm going to say set the description to be of that particular text so here i'm going to say placeholder so placeholder is going to say uh, what do you want to talk about so what do you wants to talk about that's going to be the placeholder and apart from that we have a few more options that is basically placeholder text color so placeholder text color is going to be black and we're going to give the style for this so we're going to give it a margin horizontal of 10 we're going to give it a font size of 15 and we're going to give it a, a slight font weight of let's say 500 and we're going to give it a margin top of 10 as well and i'm going to give one more option that is multi line is going to be true and apart from that maximum number of lines i'm going to give is 10 you can increase it to how much ever you want i'm going to give 10 over here and i'm going to say text align vertical is going to be top all right so yep that's it so let's save the file so as you can see we will be we are able to see that text input where you can enter the text input so now finally the next step is we're going to show the media image so i'm going to initialize the pressable for that so this pressable is basically going to have one more piece of pressable that is going to contain the icon so that is a media icon so i'm gonna search for media that is this one so import the material icons and we're gonna paste it over there so copy the render component code and we're gonna paste it over here all right so yep let's give the style for this in a, in a pressable 
so I'm gonna say style over here so basically I'm gonna give it a width of 40 and a height of 40 and margin top of 12 I'm gonna give it a background color of this color code that is E0 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 and I'm gonna give it a border radius of 20 to make it look circular and I'm gonna say justify content of center and align items of center okay so yep that's it so format once and uh, apart from that we have the text being shown that's gonna come over here so here it's gonna say media okay so let's also simultaneously give the style for the final principle that is outermost one so i'm gonna say flex direction is gonna be column okay and we're gonna give basically margin top of photo margin right of photo and margin left of photo as well let's remove margin top that's not required actually margin left of auto we're going to remove this one and simplify okay so as you can see we are able to see that icon so now for the next step is we're going to give it basically some margin top over here okay let's increase it to be 15 so yep i think that's looking really good so now the next step is we're going to write the end point in the index.js file to create a particular post okay so the, the design has been done so once you enter the text input and once you you know enter a media uh, or you or you enter any kind of image or you pick any kind of image then if you press on post automatically a post should be cre uh, created in the back end and the same should be reflected in the home screen so first step is we are going to initialize our endpoint to create a post in the index.js file over here so here i'm going to say endpoint to create a post so here i'm going to say app dot post and it's going to be forward slash create okay so here i'm going to make it of the async method with the request and the response in the callback and over here first of all we're going to initialize our try and then catch block so firstly catch of error i'm going to say console.log of error creating the post with that particular error okay and i'm going to say result dot status of 500 result dot status of 500 dot json with a message being error creating the post all right so now inside the try block uh, i'm gonna need access to three things the description the image url and the person's id who posted the post so to initialize that i'm gonna say const description comma image url comma user id equals to it's gonna come from request.body and the next step is we're gonna create the new post so i'm gonna say const new post equals to new access the post model that we have imported and we're going to pass in the required values so description is going to be description image url is going to be image url user is going to be user id okay so after we have created the post we're going to save it in the back end so to do that i'm going to say await new post dot save all right and after that we're going to send the result so result dot status of 201 dot json with a message being post created successfully and i also want to just show the new post so post is going to be of course the new post so now uh, after this we are also going to write the next endpoint that is to fetch all of the posts that will be shown in the home screen so save the file here i'm going to say end point to fetch all the posts okay so here i'm gonna write app.get it's gonna be forward slash all with the async method it's gonna take in the request and the response okay so firstly let's initialize our try and then the catch block 
so catch of error so here i'm going to say console.log of uh, error fetching all the posts with that particular error all right so here i'm going to send the result dot status of 500 dot json with a message saying error fetching all of the posts okay that's it about the catch block so inside the try block first of all i'm going to say fetch all of the posts and then populate the user field with the user details so to do, so to do that i'm going to say const posts equals to wait uh, post dot find and i'm going to apply the populate method with the required value that is the user and here i need access to three things that is the name profile image and if you want you can get access to the created add value as well okay for now i'm just going to choose these two things to show that is name and profile image uh, and here i'm going to write result dot status of 200 dot json send me all of the posts that are there in the post schema so that's it so this is the endpoint to fetch all of the required posts so let's format once and then save the file so now the next step is as i told you in the in the starting point of the video that like for storing the image we're going to make use of the firebase storage bucket right so now we're going to head over to firebase and then create a new fresh project and then we're going to implement some functions so that we can access and store that particular image url in the back end and it will be easy, easier for us to you know get that particular image url in the front end part while showing the posts in the home screen so first of all let's head over to firebase and then create a new project let's go to firebase over here in chrome and then we're going to create a fresh project so i'm going to say firebase so i'm going to press on add project so you can give a project name okay so it says you've reached the project limit so i'm going to make use of another google account so i'm going to go back select another google account so i'm going to create the project in this particular account i'm going to press on add project so here i'm going to name it as linkedin and i'm going to press on continue so here i'm not going to enable i'm just going to press on create project so this is going to take in a couple of minutes to you know initialize our project so let's wait for that okay so as you can see your new project is ready so now let's press on continue so now we need to create a web app so just press on this icon that is web icon okay so we're going to give the app name i'm going to give basically the same name that i gave previously that is linkedin itself and i'm going to press on register app so it's going to basically going to give us the configuration data that is a firebase config so as you can see it is just initializing it so make sure you copy this out and i'm going to press on continue to console so if you go to project and then project settings scroll down as you can see this is basically a configuration required so now firstly we need to install firebase so i'm just going to say yarn add firebase i think version 10 is going to get installed so so let's wait for some time so after this gets installed we are going to initialize a firebase.js file and then initialize the firebase with the help of the initialize app method so now firebase has been installed so if, if you want to check out the version so if you if you can go to the package.json as you can see the 10 i mean version 10 has been installed so now i'm going to create firebase file at the root level so press on any uh, file at the root level a new file i'm going to say firebase.js so just paste that code over here that you copied earlier and we're going to remove the unnecessary comments over here all right so here i'm going to import uh, two things that is firebase itself so i'm going to say import firebase from firebase forward slash compat forward slash app okay and after that basically i'm going to say import firebase forward slash compat forward slash storage because we are going to use the storage bucket all right so here i'm going to say initialize firebase so if not of firebase dot apps dot length then only we're going to initialize this i'm going to say firebase dot initialize app 
of basically whatever that config is that's gonna come from over here all right and here i'm gonna say basically export firebase that's it so yeah you can save the file so now the next step is we're gonna go into the firebase and then we're gonna initialize our storage so let's press in build and we're gonna access the storage part and i'm gonna say get started so we're gonna do it in test mode i'm gonna press in next and i'm gonna press i mean i'm gonna leave this as a default and i'm gonna press in done so as you can see it's creating the default bucket so let's give it some time okay guys so our firebase storage bucket has been initialized as you can see so now the next step is for you know storing the image and picking the image we'll be making use of two dependencies expo image picker as well as the expo file system so i'm going to search for expo image picker and in one more tab expo file system okay just like this and uh, firstly i'm going to go to the first link for image picker and we're going to install the dependency so with the help of this code copy that out and come to the vs code and we're going to paste it right here and uh, after that let's come to this tab the first link and we're going to install with the help of this code okay so these two dependencies are required so let's wait for this to install okay so let's paste this one all right so now let's come back to our uh a post dot i mean index.js file over here firstly i'm going to initialize the state to hold the image so i'm going to say const image comma set image equals to use state it's going to be an empty string at the initial state so here also i'm just going to copy down the uh, initial function that we used in the network that is to get the user id so copy this out and i'm going to paste it in my index file right over here so make sure you import use effect as well as async storage and the jwt decode so first let's import async storage and from the network i mean from the index.js file let's import this as well and i'm gonna paste it over here all right so let's you know initialize the state to hold the id so i'm gonna say const user id comma set user id equals to use state of an empty string all right so now the next step is we have uh, you know initialize the state for the image as well as the user id so now we are going to initialize the on press event on this media button that we have so let's scroll down and over here i'm going to say on press basically it's going to say create or pick image pick a image so we're going to define this function over here so i'm going to say const pick image equals to async function i'm going to initialize my result equals to the weight i'm going to say image picker so first of all let's import both of the dependencies that are required at the top that is file system as well as image picker so i'm going to say import star as image picker from expo image picker next one is for the files i'm going to say import star as file system uh, file system from expo file system that's it okay so over here let's come back to the function and we are going to say wait image picker dot we have the function that is launch image library async which is going to take in the object here we here we're going to give some important options that is media types so all this is available in the documentation you can directly copy from that okay so media types is going to be image picker dot media type options dot all all right and i'm going to say allows editing is going to be true and i'm going to say aspect is going to be four by three and the quality is going to be one 
so uh, here i'm going to say console.log of result so this is basically going to give the uri okay so i'm going to say if at all result is not cancelled that means uh, after choosing the pick if you do not press on the cancel button then we're going to set the image all right so here i'm going to say if at all not of result dot cancelled i'm going to say set the image to be result uh, result dot assets of zero dot uri all right so let's uh, try this out if it is exactly working i already have few images in my uh, gallery that i've downloaded from linkedin itself so format once and let's see if you're able to select the image and we should be able to see the uri that is basically in the result that is basically an object so let's press and post i mean let's refresh once let's go to post and let's press in media okay nothing seems to happen uh, let's scroll down and let's check the function okay we have given it to the correct pressable we have another pressable oh, okay uh, i think we need to give it to this pressable because that is what is containing the icon i think that's why it's not working i think it's being seen on the screen so just copy that and paste it for the second pressable so now let's press on the icon and hopefully we should be able to see uh, the image picker opening up yes so as you can see we are able to see the image picker opening up so i'm going to press on the second image and i'm going to press and choose okay so in the console as you can see we are able to see that over here we have uh, basically the height and the image so this is the uri that is local to your system but we do not want that so that's why we are hosting it in the bucket so that it becomes easier to access the url so this part is working absolutely fine so now the next step is uh, we're going to press i mean we're going to initialize on press event on basically the post button okay so finally over here that is on press here i'm going to say create post so let's define this function right at the top over here so i'm going to say const create post equals to a async method and over here i'm going to initialize my try catch block okay so firstly in the in, in the catch block i'm going to say console.log error creating the post with that particular error message all right so inside the try block i'm going to say const uploaded url equals to await upload file so i'm just going to copy down the function for upload file okay you can just feel free to copy the code i'm going to initialize the function right over here so i'm going to say const upload file equals to the async function so here i'm just going to paste the code for uploading the uh, file to firebase bucket all right we'll be making use of xhr and the x uh, and the xml http request okay so from at once i'm going to scroll down once more so the code is going to start from the try block and finally we're going to return this download url and this uh, this particular download url is going to be present in this particular constant variable that is uploaded url all right so i think we also need to import firebase from that particular file because we have exported it from the firebase.js file so make sure you import firebase okay uh, it's not importing let us write firebase again okay let's try to import it manually at the top so here i'm going to say import firebase from okay one more time and then firebase yep i think this is the correct one okay so let's format once you can check out the code once more for uploading the file so basically we are tracking the image that uh, that is selected from expo image picker and then we are going to and then, then we are going to do the implementation required to put the image uri in the backend part okay so that that download url will, will be stored inside of this particular constant variable as i told so after that i'm going to initialize my 
post data so here i'm going to say const post data equals to an object so firstly we need the description that is stored inside of the description that is basically the state and the next one is image url that's going to be uploaded url itself that is going to come from the bottom function that is upload file all right and after that we have the user id that also is already there over here that is once we uh, once we come to this page automatically the user effect is going to run and set the user id so the post data is ready so now i'm going to create my response so i'm going to say const response equals to await axios so make sure you import axios from axios we're going to make use of the post method and this is going to be the url that is http localhost 3000 forward slash post i mean forward slash create and it's going to take in the post data as the body all right so yep that's it and uh, i'm just going to say console.log the post is being created so to access it's going to be of course the response dot data so here we're going to check the condition that if at all uh the response if at all response dot data i mean if response dot status equals equals to 201 that is the one which we gave in the index.js file then firstly let's initialize our router we are going to go to the home screen so i'm going to say const router or const router equals to use router and make sure you import use router from expo router just like this and here i'm going to say if at all this is true then just do router dot replace to the forward slash taps and i want you to go to the home screen so it's going to be forward slash home okay so that's it so format once and let's give this a try all right so now before trying that is uh, before pressing on the post button once you enter the description and once you select the image we also need to see the image over here right so we're gonna in initialize something in the return block okay after after setting the image so once you press on the icon and after selecting the image automatically that uri is set in this particular value that is image because we are seeing set image of this particular whatever value it is right so just come to the text input and just below the text input i'm just gonna paste this out okay so it's basically going to contain the view and i'm going to write the condition that is if at all there is the image then only render the image the source is going to be uri image with this 100 percentage height is 240 and margin vertical of 40. so make sure you import image image is already imported so yep we're going to save the file and then we're going to give this a try so let's come over here so here i'm going to write a description let's say here there and I'm going to choose the image and I'm going to press on choose so as you can see we're able to see that image so I'm just going to press on post over here so hopefully we should be seeing the correct results okay so okay we got error it says error creating post or failed with status code 500 so over here let's check out yeah so we have error it says uh, user path user is required so i think it is related to the index.js file so let's look into that once so we have description image url so description image url equal to request and here okay uh, we have forgotten to write the body it's going to be request dot body so save the file and we're going to come back over here and let's give this another try so i'm going to press and post one more time so hopefully we should be navigated to the home screen and there you go yes it is working absolutely fine and we can see the message saying post created so this is the message and this is the post basically this is a description here there and this is the image url as you can see https firebase storage dot google apis dot com let's check that out in the firebase bucket i'm just going to refresh this once and you should be able to see the image being stored over here so as you can see we have the first image being set over here so this is basically our url that is being set okay if you press on this as you can see this is the image which is being stored inside of the firebase storage all right so the same kind of image url is stored inside of the post uh, also so let's check that out so i'm going to go to posts 
all right so as you can see we have the image url which can be easily accessible with the help of dot image url and this is the likes the comments and this is the description and this is the uh, id of the user who has created the post that is this person's id okay so this has been uh, this is this is working absolutely fine so now the next step is we're gonna uh, go into the uh, home screen that is index.js file and then we're gonna start fetching all of the posts we have already you know uh, designed the endpoint for this in the previous part of the video so now we're just gonna you know initialize the use effect and then get all of the posts and then design the posts all right with the user information who has posted the post and then later we'll be looking into the likes part of it so firstly let's look into the design of the home screen so firstly inside the home screen i need, I need access to two things that is the user id as well as the user profile so first of all let's initialize the state required for storing the user id as well as the uh, user profile so this is for the user id so i'm going to say const user comma set user equals to use state and initially it's just going to be empty so make sure you import uh, use state from react okay so now the next step is firstly we're just going to fetch the functions that we have used previously so let's head over to network.js one is for fetch user so just copy that out let's come over here and paste it make sure you import the required things that is async storage and uh, use effect as well and even the token that is jwt decode so let's come over here uh, copy this piece of code and we're gonna paste it right here and apart from that we are uh, we also need the access to the profile of the user so let's come to index.js over here and i'm going to say if at all there is user id then just copy this function i mean and then just initialize the function that is fetch user profile all right make sure you import axios okay so yep uh yeah so that that part is done so now the next step is we're gonna basically fetch all of the posts as i told so currently we just have one post so i'm gonna say use effect Okay, so here I'm gonna say const fetch all posts equals to async function and here I'm gonna initialize my try catch block so catch of error here I'm gonna say console.log of error fetching the posts with that particular error all right so inside the try block I'm gonna initialize my response value so I'm going to say const response equals to await axios. So make sure you import axios. It's already imported. Dot get method. So it's going to be HTTP forward slash localhost 3000 forward slash all. We've already defined this previously. So if you check out over here. So we have our endpoint to fetch all the posts. That's going to be forward slash all. Okay. So after doing that, firstly, let's initialize the state to also hold the posts. So here I'm gonna say const posts comma set posts equals to use state. So since we can have n number of posts, I'm gonna provide an empty array at the initial state. All right. So here I'm gonna say after uh, you know executing the response part, here I'm gonna say set post to be the response uh, response dot data dot posts. Okay, that's it set posts let's write that correctly and here i'm just gonna call the function that is fetch all posts so now let's give this a try so here i'm just gonna say console.log of the posts so let's save the file so as you can see we have the posts array with the unique id comments is uh, nothing uh, uh, created at value description the image url of the post the user object that is the person i mean the information of the user was posted that the profile image and the name of the person and we have basically the underscore id of the person so with the help of this information we're going to start designing basically the home screen so first of all uh, we're going to come uh, to the return block and we're going to firstly initialize our scroll view 
so let's import that out over here and we're going to use this instead of the normal view that is present over here so scroll view and scroll view all right so we're going to initialize the view in the first view that we have and this in turn is going to contain basically the pressable so i'm going to say pressable import pressable from react native and we're going to initialize the image tag import image also from react native so this is basically going to show the profile picture of the user once when logged into the home screen so this source in turn is going to take in the uri so we already have you know created the function to store the user so to access the profile image it's going to be user dot profile image if you want you can console to log the user you should be seeing the correct information so we, let's give the style for the image so that we can see it on the screen so i'm going to give it a width of 30 and basically a height of 30 and a border radius of 25 i mean 15 to make it look circular so save the file so as you can see you are able to see the person's profile who is currently logged in so after this i'm going to initialize one more pressable just after the previous one so this is basically going to contain the search bar kind that is basically with the icon and the text input so here i'm going to firstly get the icons from expo icons i'm going to search for search the first one from and design so first of all import the icon family and uh, we're going to paste it over here copy that into component code and we're going to paste it right here all right and after that we have basically the text input coming so i'm going to say initialize the text input and also make sure you import that from react native so it's going to have a placeholder here it's going to say search so placeholder is going to be search so let's give the style for basically the outermost pressable over here so i'm going to say style of uh, flex direction of row and align items of center we have a flex of one we're going to give it in the later part okay and we're going to give it margin horizontal of seven a gap of 10 and i'm going to give it background color of white a slight border radius so border radius of 3 and a specific height of 30 so this is basically the styling for the pressable so i'm going to save the file once so as you can see you're able to see the pressable on the screen so for this let's give some styling basically a margin left of 10 okay so margin left of 10 so yes save the file and after the pressable we're going to have one more icon that is basically the ellipsis outline icon yeah so we're going to choose this one so import uh, the iron icons firstly and uh, copy the render component code and after the pressable after the second pressable that is over here we're gonna paste it all right and now let's give the style for the outermost view that contains the, the image the icon i mean the search bar as well as the third icon so here i'm going to say style basically i'm going to give it some internal spacing padding of 10 a flex direction of row align items of center and i'm going to give it a specific gap of four and now we're going to give the flex of one to the second uh, to the second principle because i want it to push the icon towards the rightmost part so the, for that reason i'm going to say flex of one so save the file as you can see now that's looking better okay so if you want you can decrease the size of the ant design icon that is a search bar to 22 or 20 maybe yep i think that's looking better so now after that we are basically you know gonna map over the posts and then display each one of them so we're gonna say over here view here i'm gonna say 
posts dot map so for every item and then index i'm basically gonna return one more view over here just like this okay so over here firstly we're gonna initialize our image that needs to be shown so here i'm gonna initialize one more view inside the view so here let's write the view and inside of this i'm gonna initialize the image tag so it's gonna take in the source which is further gonna take in the uri and to access the profile image it's gonna be item dot user dot profile image because user is again an object so here i'm gonna say item dot user dot profile image okay so let's give the style for this so i'm gonna give it a specific width and height so width of 60 uh, height of 60 and a border radius of or let's say 30 okay so let's save the file so as you can see this is the person who posted the image or the post so let's give the key for this it's index so now apart from the image we're going to show the description part so to do that i'm going to initialize one more view just beneath the image over here okay so this view is basically going to contain uh, some pieces of text so firstly text attribute so firstly i'm going to show the username so it's going to be item dot user dot name and uh, below that we're going to show basically the item dot description if at all we have it and if we do not have the description then in that case we're just going to show the hard coded value so here i'm going to say engineer graduate or linkedin member so we're gonna you know uh, initialize one more endpoint to add the description when we design the profile screen and then later you can come back and make the change over here such as item dot user dot description or directly the user dot description so here i'm going to say linkedin member so let's give the style for this the first one also so i'm going to say style so here i'm going to give it a font size of 15 and i'm going to give it a font weight of 600 all right so for the second piece of text i'm going to say style it's going to have a specific width i'm going to say width of 230 if at all the description of the user is long we're going to just provide this much width to it so color is going to be gray and also one more attribute that is number of lines is going to be just one so i'm going to say number of lines equals to one and apart from color we have the font size so i'm going to say font size equals to 15 and font weight is going to be 400 and finally we have the next piece of text where we're going to show at which time this particular post was created so we have already installed moment so with the help of the format uh, method we're gonna initialize this so i'm gonna say text so it's gonna be moment make sure you import moment from moment all right and i'm gonna say access the item dot created at method or that particular value and apply the format method to this so it's gonna be the same thing that we have used previously that is mmmm four times and uh, And we have do and then yeah 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 okay four times why so save the file okay moment does not exist all right it's not imported import moment from moment save the file as you can see October 16th 2023 okay <coughs> not sure why uh, it is also showing 10th over here yep now it's uh, showing correctly okay i had written the m uh, five times i guess so that uh, was the problem so now the next step is uh, we're gonna you know uh, give the style for the outermost view that contains the image 
as well as uh, the pieces of text so let's go over here target this particular style that is for the view i'm going to say flex direction row line items of center and justify content of space between okay that's not looking good i think we forgot one more step let's remove align items to center first of all and let's scroll down and then we are going to initialize basically another view after the description these are basically the icons okay so view so this is going to contain basically two icons one is the dot icon and the x icon so let's get that real quick so the vertical one so we need to import and typo and typo is not imported and apart from that we have the x icon yeah that is from feather so copy the render component code and we're gonna paste it just beneath this so for this one also it needs to be in a row so i'm gonna say style flex direction of row line item serve center and i'm gonna give uh, a gap of 10 okay so feather does not exist so let's import feather from the expo icons okay so as you can see that's looking better so i've just made one change that is i, I have added one more view that is this one okay and uh, inside that we have basically the image and the description uh, and for that particular view, view we have given the styles that is flex direction of row and align items of center and apart from that we have the second view that's going to contain the icons okay previously we had just one view for all of the three children so now we have another view that is uh, put in for this particular one which contains the image and the description and also make sure you enter this particular method that is ellipsis mode is, is equals to tail okay so format once and we, we have also given number of lines equals to one okay so uh, uh, when it reaches this particular width it, it automatically is going to put the three dots over here and apart from that the those two icons are looking better so that's the change you need to make so let's uh, keep this icon size to be 20 okay yeah that's looking better so now we're gonna target basically the description and then show the text so that is gonna happen after uh, this particular view all right so i'm gonna say over here view so here first of all we're gonna say text it's gonna be item dot description save the file okay so that's a description that i've given previously so for this view i'm going to give a style margin top of 10 margin horizontal of 10 and margin bottom of 12 okay and apart from that so let's imagine uh, the description is a uh, pretty long but we do not want to show the entire description at one go all right so for that reason uh, we're gonna make use of a variable known as uh, see more after the description and if and only if the user presses on the see more then only we're gonna press i mean then only we're gonna show the entire description right so first of all i'm gonna initialize the text for showing the full text so i'm gonna scroll top over here and here i'm gonna say const maximum lines is gonna be two if you want you can give how many other lines you want and to initialize the state i'm going to say const show full text comma set show full text equals to use state 
and initially it's gonna be an empty string all right so now we're gonna initialize basically the on press event or we're gonna check based on the condition over here so after the item dot description i'm gonna say if at all there is no show full text that means if at all it's not selected then itself i'm gonna say initialize this pressable with this particular text which says see uh, which says see more okay so show full text and uh, we're going to initialize on press event on this pressable which we're going to say toggle show full text so i'm going to define it over here at the top So here I'm going to say const toggle, toggle full text equals to set show full text uh, to be not of the uh, show full text, right? So over here instead of the empty string, we're going to change it. So initially we're going to make it to be false. And if it don't, and if and only if the user presses on uh, the button that is CMO button, uh, then only we're going to make it to be true. So I think there is a spelling error. So it, it needs to be set show full text. And over here also show full text all right so i think that's it let's make this change again all right so now uh, yeah let's format once and over here we're going to give some options to the text that is basically the description so here I'm going to say number of lines. So if at all the show full text is selected in our case, so show full text, then it's going to be undefined. Else it's going to be the maximum number of lines. Okay. So that's it about the options for the text. So let's give the style for this. I'm going to say font size of 15 save the file all right so format once so as you can see now it's working absolutely fine but here we should not be seeing the c mode because we only have two words okay so this part i'm leaving it to you you can try it out and uh, change the conditions and make it work and show only the c more if at all the number of lines is greater than two okay it's pretty simple to, to do that so now the next step is we're gonna show and render the image that's gonna come right after this particular view so i'm gonna say image let's import image from react native it's already imported so it's gonna be item dot image url okay so as you can see that is our image so now the next step is we're basically gonna show the icons at the bottom part so let's scroll over here and after the image i'm gonna say view So view okay and uh, just below the view we're gonna have different number of I mean different pressables with the icon name and the text so here I'm gonna say pressable so first of all we need the like icon so let's go over here and search for like we're gonna choose this one import it from and design we're gonna use it over here and design is already imported all right and this is basically going to contain the text okay so this text is going to say uh like so format once so for the pressable i'm going to give the style okay so this is not going to have any style we're going to give it for the and design so i'm going to say style uh, text align of center okay and for like i'm going to say over here style so here it's basically gonna have text align of center a specific font size of 12 and it's gonna have color of gray and I'm gonna give it a margin top of 2 so I'm just gonna copy this a couple of times and then later make the changes that is three more times 
all right so i'm going to give the style for the outermost view over here so i'm going to say style uh i'm going to give a flex direction of a row align items of center so center and this is going to be justify content is going to be space around so i'm going to say space around and margin vertical as well if you we can have a number of posts so margin vertical of 10 okay so these are the required styles for the outermost view so i'm going to save the file yep i think that's looking better so now uh, i'm gonna you know initialize the divider that is kind of, that's a kind of a design after the image over here so let's initialize the view with uh, which is going to be a self-enclosing tag so i'm going to give it a specific height of two so height of two and i'm going to give it a border color of this color code that is e0 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 and it's gonna have a border width of two all right yep that's looking better so now let's start making the changes i'm just gonna paste in the required changes that is for the icon okay so i have pasted the code and saved the file as you can see so i'm gonna show from the first so this is the first one which you have designed that is a like and this is the second pressable you can look into that font awesome icon with the text which says comment let's also give the same piece of styling that we gave i mean basically change the color to gray over here okay that is changed i think for the icon we need to change to be gray so over here i'm gonna say gray yep i think that's looking nice and that was the second one that is a comment icon so the third one is again pressable with the text which says repost and this is the required icon the same styles is copied for everything and the final one is the feather icon which says send all right so let's give some uh, margin top to the uh, design because it's not being seen i guess okay so that is this one margin top of let's say 15 for this and yep i think that's looking better all right so we have you know designed the post screen so you can go and create a number of posts so the same thing is going to get reflected in the home screen so now the next step is we're going to look into the likes part of it so first of all to, to implement this we are going to initialize the endpoint in the index.js file to liking a post and apart from that we're going to do one more thing as well that is if at all we go to the profile screen which you have not yet designed if at all you press on you know add a description or save the description button we need to be able to save that description whatever the user has written into the back end so here we'll be def uh, defining two endpoints now so i'm going to say endpoints to uh, save or uh, like a post and after after we complete this we're going to define the second one that is to update the user uh, information or description to the back end as well so here i'm going to say app.post so it's going to be forward slash like forward slash the post id and then forward slash the user id so it's going to be a async method with the request and the response over here and first of all we're going to initialize our try and then catch block so here i'm going to say console.log error liking a post with that particular error and we're going to send the result result dot status of 500 dot json with a message being error liking the post all right that's it so now inside the try block firstly we need access to two things the post id so i'm going to say const post id equals to request dot params dot post id and we need access to user id as well so i'm going to say const user id equals to request dot params dot user id all right and first of all i'm going to say const post equals to await await post dot find by id of the 
post ID okay so after finding the post ID we're gonna do some uh, implementation so before that firstly we're gonna check if at all there is a post or not so here I'm gonna say if at all there is no post then we're gonna check uh, I mean we're gonna send the status right so here I'm gonna say return return result dot status of 400 dot json with a message being post not found all right so here we will be implementing even the unliking of the post as well so first step is here i'm going to say check if the user is already liked the post so if the user is already liked the post and again presses on the like button then we should decrease the like count for that particular post so here i'm going to write const existing a uh, like equals to access the post value that is over here okay so here i'm going to say post dot access the likes dot find we're going to apply the find method we're going to say for every like if the like dot user dot to string is equal equal to the user id this is the condition then that means that particular post has been liked already so user id so format once over here so here i'm going to apply the condition that if at all we have the existing like so existing like then in that case i'm going to say post dot likes we're going to apply the filter method so here i'm going to say post dot likes equals to post dot likes dot filter so for every like i'm going to say the like dot user dot to string should not be equally equal to the user id just the opposite if at all there is an existing like else if there is no likes for that particular post and if you press on the like button then here i'm going to say post dot likes uh, dot push user is gonna be user id so for th uh, that reason I'm, i've written here like dot user okay hope you get that part because we are pushing the user value which is going to be user id that's going to come from here okay that's the way this thing works so we have you know defined both the conditions that is that is unliking and liking part and after we have done this i'm going to say await post dot save so that particular data gets saved in the backend part so here i'm going to say result dot status of 200 dot json with a message being post like or unlike unlike successful okay if you want you can send the value of the post that has been updated so yep that's it so format once and uh, so now the next uh, step is we're gonna say endpoint to update user description all right so here i'm gonna make it the put method so i'm gonna say app dot put so it's gonna be forward slash profile forward slash profile and then forward slash user id okay so async request dot response first of all the try and then catch block so here i'm going to say console dot log of error updating user profile and this is going to be the error and here i'm going to say result dot status of 500 dot json with a message being error updating the user profile so inside the try block first of all to update the user description we need access to the user id so here i'm going to say const user id equals to request dot params dot uh, user id 
okay so first of all let's get the user description from the body so here i'm going to say const user test uh, description equals to request dot body whatever they have entered and after that we are going to find the user by id and update the user description so to do that i'm going to say await user dot we have the method find by id and then update so find by id and update we're going to update basically that particular document having this user id and we're going to say update the user description whatever is coming from the request dot body that's it and after doing this i'm going to say result dot status of 200 dot json with a particular message being user profile updated uh, successfully okay so yep this is the description i mean this is the result dot status so format once and then we're gonna save the file so now we have defined two of the endpoints so now let's head over to the index file i mean yeah index file of the home folder create on press event on the like button so here i'm going to say on press it's going to take in a function and here i'm going to write handle like post of basically the item dot underscore id so this is basically the post id that we are sending in the parameter so let us define the function at the top over here and also we're going to define some state uh, to check whether it is liked or not which is not persistent of course so here i'm going to say is liked comma set is liked set is liked equals to use state and it's that is const handle like post equals to async function which is going to take in basically the parameter which in our case is going to be the post id all right so here we're going to initialize the try and then the catch block so catch of error here i'm going to say console.log error liking or unliking the post okay so with that particular error whatever it is we're going to show it over here so inside the try block first of all you're going to initialize our response value so here i'm going to say const response equals to await axios dot post method this is going to be the url i think let's import axios it's already imported i guess yes axios is already imported so inside the post method let's pass in the url that is http localhost 3000 forward slash like forward slash post id and we already have the user id so it's going to be forward slash uh, user id okay so we're going to check the condition once over here that is if at all the response dot status equals equals to 200 we're going to say const updated post equals to response dot data dot post okay and here i'm going to say set is liked to be updated post we're going to apply the sum method over here so i'm going to say updated post dot access the likes first of all and over here i'm going to apply the sum method in javascript for so for every like the like dot user should be equally equal to the user id then that means the post has been liked and this is going to become true if it is false it's going to become false and the uh, post is unliked by that particular user so yep that's it so let's you know try this out and hopefully we should be seeing the change in the back end so before that we're going to make some ui change as well that is just after the image we're going to display the number of likes that is going to happen uh let's uh, see okay just after the image so we are mapping over the posts and we are showing the image over here yeah so just below the image here i'm going to say item dot access the likes and if at all its length is greater than zero then only we're going to show this 
okay so if the item dot likes dot length is greater than zero and and here i'm gonna say view all right and inside this view we are gonna show the icon so firstly let's get the icon from the expo icons so i'm gonna search for like over here import the uh, fi icon family copy the render component code and we're gonna paste it uh, right over here all right and apart from that we're gonna show basically the length so it's gonna be item dot likes dot length so it's gonna have a specific color so i'm gonna say style color of gray and this is also gonna have a specific color that is 0072b1 format one so currently nothing should happen because there are i mean there are no likes for this particular post so yep let's give this a try and then check uh check it out okay i'm gonna press on the like button so as you can see we have one like for this particular post so everything is working absolutely amazing that is padding of 10 uh flex direction of row align items of center and we're gonna give it a gap of six okay so format once and we can save the file so let's remove the margin top from here because we've given the padding and we're also gonna decrease the size of the icon okay we're gonna make it look let's give it 16 so yeah i think that's looking better and we also need to make the ui change over here that is if it is liked we are going to show the blue color for the icon okay so let's come back to the like icon and where we have the color here i'm going to say if at all it is liked i mean if at all is liked that means if it is true we're going to show uh, we're going to show this color else it's going to be gray itself so i'm going to copy down uh, this piece of code and we're going to paste it over here so the same thing i'm just going to copy the same condition and we're going to change the text as well so color is going to be this within the braces all right so let us format once okay i think we need to i mean we need to remove the braces my bad because it's already inside of an object so yep i think that's it so let's try this out from the start okay so <clears throat> yeah currently as i told it's not going to have state so if i again press on this it's going to become zero so i'm going to press again on this so as you can see we have the like uh, being applied and even the color is changing to this particular color that is a blue color so yep this is uh, this is working absolutely fine you can add a number of posts and then check this out okay even in the back end you can check out the likes array okay basically my id itself should be there that is the person who is logged in because i only have liked the post okay so now the next step is we're going to start and design the profile screen so firstly let's head over to the uh, profile.js and uh, before that let's you know initialize the on press event on the icon over here that is where we have the image and then if at all we press on that we should be navigated to the profile screen and then start looking into the design of it i think it's gonna happen over here on this possible so here i'm gonna say on press router.push to home and then forward slash profile so first of all let's initialize the router so i'm gonna say const router equals to use router so make sure you import use router from expo router okay just like this and let's press on the profile page over here so as you can see we are coming correctly to the profile screen 
So now let's start designing the profile screen. So let's come to profile.js file of the home folder. And over here, first of all, we're gonna access the same things that we that we did earlier. Okay, that is uh, the fetch user as well as the fetch profile. So uh, I think that's that instead of the network or the post as well. So let's come over here. And uh, yep, we're gonna access this. Okay, so copy that out and come to the profile.js file and we're gonna paste it over here we also need the user as well so const user from our set user equals to use state it's gonna be empty initially so we're gonna import two things from react that is the use state and the use effect we're also gonna import use router that's not coming so we're gonna do it uh, manually so use router is there over here copy that and we're gonna paste it over here and inside of the uh, index uh, .js file of the home uh, route we're gonna also include the uh, fetch user profile okay so we could actually use the context but since this is new that is since even i'm new to you know expo file based routing we're gonna make use of this and then uh, in the further projects we're gonna look into how exactly we can use a global context over here so yep that's it so import axios from axios let's manually do that so i'm gonna say import axios from axios and apart from that we have i think everything imported import even async storage as well so let's do it again manually so index.js file we need async storage as well as the jwt decode so come back to the profile and then we're gonna paste it over here all right we have everything set up so we're gonna copy the same thing that is the first part of the index.js file where we had the profile as well as a search bar into the profile.js file again so just copy the first piece of the view and come back over here and we're gonna paste it right here and we're gonna import the necessary changes that we want that is the pressable all right so we are gonna uh, remove this on press that's not required then we need access to image so i'm gonna say image and apart from that we need access to the text input and the icons so here i'm gonna say text input let's come to the index.js file and copy the components for the icons that is basically Oh yeah, uh, ion icons and in typo I guess or and design. So we're gonna come over here and we're gonna paste it. So I think it's gonna be and design itself. So yep, let us you know save. So as you can see, this is basically a profile screen. Okay. So now uh, we're gonna start designing it. So we have made the necessary uh, calls. That is basically the use effects. Uh, okay and we have just imported the first part of the design from the index.js file so now after this part we're going to design the banner so i'm just going to comment this down and here i'm going to get the image so i'm going to paste the image over here and save the file so basically this is going to be the banner so now after this i'm going to initialize my view to have to show basically the uh, profile of the user so i'm going to say source which is going to take in the uri so it's going to be user dot uh, profile image okay and inside the image we're going to give the style basically uh, we're going to give it a width of 120 okay and we're going to give it basically a height of 120 height of 120 and a border radius of 60 to make it look circular all right so here i'm going to give the style for the view so basically i'm going to say position of absolute so that it comes on the banner so i'm going to give it a top value of 130 and a left of 10 so save the file so as you can see that's looking better so now after that we're going to basically show uh the other kinds of details in the profile page that's going to happen over here so i'm going to initialize one more view and this is going to contain the text which says the user dot name so user dot the name 
and we're going to give the style for this so here i'm going to say style it's going to have a font size of 17 okay and it's going to have a font weight of bold so save the file and we're going to give the margin top to this so that it comes below the image so i'm going to say margin top of 80 and margin horizontal of 10 so as you can see that's looking better so apart from the text we are, we are going to initialize the pressable okay so here we, we are going to initialize the button to add the bio and then save it to the back end so i'm going to save text so first of all here i'm going to say if at all there is user dot description okay if at all we have this i mean if at all we have user dot user description because that's what is there in the back end part user dot user description okay if at all this is present then it needs to be saying edit if it is not present it should say uh, add bio over here so i'm going to say add bio all right so i'm going to save the file so it should say add bio because we do not have any user description for this particular user so yep uh, i'm going to initialize on press event over here so i'm going to say on press so first of all we're going to initialize the state to check whether it is in editing mode or not so let's come back over here and here i'm going to say const uh, is editing const is editing comma set is editing okay equals to use state and initially it's going to be false all right and we're going to initialize on press event over here so here i'm going to say set editing is to be the opposite of is editing that means if it's false make it true if it's true we're going to make it as false and yep after this pressable i'm going to initialize my view over here we're going to apply the condition in the view we're going to say if at all is editing then we're going to display something okay something in the return block else we're going to display something else so if at all it's editing uh for now i'm just gonna display the fragment and inside the fragment i want the text input to be displayed so text input and here we are uh, basically going to initialize the value so we are, we are also going to initialize a state to hold the description so i'm going to say const user description comma set user description equals to use state of an empty string okay so here it's gonna be user description in the value attribute we also have the method that is on change text to set the value so here basically we're gonna take in the text and here i'm gonna say set the user description to be whatever text the user is typing so by doing this we have access to whatever the user is typing in inside of the state okay and below that we basically have the button so that we can save this particular data to the back end so here i'm going to say uh, actually we can make use of the uh, single enclosing tags make sure you import button from react native so button just like this and uh, in the button i'm going to say title that is title it's going to be save okay title is going to be save over here and we're going to initialize the on press event on the button so i'm going to say on press uh, we're gonna say handle save description so handle save description so we're gonna define this function right at the top so before that let's complete the else block if at all we have the uh, I mean uh, the description we're gonna show that over here that is gonna be user dot user description okay so that's it we're gonna save the file so format once and uh, let's define the function that is handle save description at the top over here so here i'm going to say const handle save description equals to a async function so here we have, we've already defined the endpoint for this previously so first of all let's initialize our try catch block in the function so first of all for the catch of error i'm going to say console.log of error saving user description with that particular error so inside the try block i am going to say const uh, response equals to 
await axios dot put method so this is basically going to be the url that is http localhost 3000 forward slash profile and then forward slash user id so this is basically going to take in of course the the body that's going to be user description in our case that is already there inside of the state okay so here we're going to check the condition that is if at all the response dot status uh, equals equals to 200 that means which is success here i'm going to say await fetch the user profile again so that it 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 gets updated okay so here i'm going to say set is is editing to be false so yep that's it uh i think the this this user description should come inside itself i have written in the wrong bracket okay so back text and over here itself i'm gonna pass in the user description okay not that my bad so over here the user description so i think i had written it in the correct way so never mind so i think this is this is gonna be the correct value that is going to be uh, from the state user description okay so save the file so now let's give this a try okay so we're going to press on add bio so as you can see uh, i think for the text input let's provide uh, the placeholder that is over here placeholder here i'm going to say enter your description save the file so here I'm going to say a uh, front end developer and then YouTube creator something like this and if I press on save hopefully if we have done everything correct we should be you know storing the user description in the back end and showing it here as well. So as you can see we have stored it uh, we have stored that particular user description in the back end and you're, you're able to see this particular uh user description okay that is front end developer or the youtube creator so that part is working absolutely fine so now the next step is we're gonna uh, continue designing it that is after this particular view i'm gonna have one more piece of text which says uh youtube and i'm gonna write a LinkedIn member so for this text I'm gonna give some styling so basically a margin top of 12 and a font weight of 500 and a font size of 15 okay and apart from that we're gonna have one more piece of text over here which is gonna give us the address so here I'm just gonna hard code it the city name i mean the country name so let's give the style for this so i'm going to say style font size is going to be 15 and the color is going to be gray so save the file so as you can see that's looking better so now the next uh, step is we're going to uh, continue designing so after this piece of view i'm going to initialize my view over here so this is basically going to contain two pressables so pressable one so this pressable is going to contain the text okay which says open to and we're going to give the style for this so basically it's going to have a background color so background color of this color code that is 0072b1 it's going to have some padding vertical of four and it's gonna have some padding horizontal of 10 and it's gonna have some border radius as well of 25 okay so we're gonna give the same piece of styling for this text as i mean not the same piece of styling we're gonna style the text and we're gonna copy the pressable and make the changes so for this i'm gonna say color of white and then a uh, text a line of center so I'm going to copy the pressable one more time and it's going to say add section. 
so instead of open to i'm gonna say add section over here all right so now the next step is uh, uh we're gonna save the file once so as you can see we have both the things being seen open to an add section let's target the view and then give the styling for this so i'm gonna say style over here so first of all flex direction of row and align items of center okay and i'm gonna give it a specific gap of 10 and margin top of 12 and margin horizontal of 10 so yep that's it save the file as you can see that's looking better so now after that we're going to continue uh, with the ui design that's going to come after this particular view so i'm going to say view uh, this is going to contain two pieces of text the first one is going to say analytics so this is just for the ui purpose to fill up the profile screen let's give the style for this so i'm going to say style basically a font size of 17 okay and i'm going to say font weight of bold and we have one more piece of text over here which says a private to you so wrong spelling of bold let's give the style over here so style font size of 15 color of gray and a slight margin top of 2 let's give some styling to the view so it comes in correct alignment so here i'm going to say margin horizontal of 10 and a margin top of 10 okay yep that's looking nice so after that text we have one more piece of view view over here so first of all i'm going to get the people icons that is from iron icon so so it's for people so we're going to use this one okay so first of all copy this out and import the icon family okay iron icon is already imported that's great so over here yeah after this iron icons i'm going to initialize my view with a piece of text which says 350 profile views and we are going to have one more piece of text beneath this which says uh, discover who's viewed your profile okay and for this piece of text uh, i mean for this piece of view i'm going to give style okay not this one the outermost view which contains the icon and the view so flex direction of a row align items of center and uh, we're gonna give it basically a gap of seven and a margin top as well so margin top of 10 so let's save the file so let's remove align items of center that's not looking good so yep uh let's save the file now and let's increase the icon size to be 28 so for the first piece of text i'm gonna say style be a font size of 15 all right and we're gonna give it a font to weight of 600 let's also give it some margin left it's almost touching the left part of the icon i mean the right part of the icon so margin left of 7 okay yep that's looking fine so i'm going to copy the same piece of styling over here and then make the changes for the second piece of text so let's keep the font weight to be 500 and the color is gonna be 
gray and the margin top is going to be one so format once and yep that's it for this particular view so now uh, let's bring this down now this is the second part of the design so i think let's just copy this once and then we're gonna paste it over here and then make the changes so instead of uh iron icons we need n typo that also is present we're just gonna make the change for the icon name so for this one let's change the name instead of people it's gonna be bar graph all right so here it's gonna say number of impressions And the second piece of text is going to say check out who's engaging with your posts so save the file okay bar graph is not present or uh, not sure why that's not working so let's search for graph over here and let's choose the correct one graph yeah, bar graph from and typo. Okay, I forgot to change the icon name. Okay. And yep, I think that's looking fine. So afterwards, we have the final design. So copy the second view and then paste it out over here and make the changes. So it's going to be the search icon from Feather. So I'm going to say Feather over here this is going to be search so search and we're going to show again the sum quantity of numbers and for the second one it's going to see we're going to say see how often you appear in Search results. All right, so let's import feather. If it is not imported, it's already imported. Great. So save the file. So yep, yeah, that's it. Okay, we have finished designing the profile screen. So finally, if you want, you can you know initialize just a logout button over here. Let's say pressable. And logout. We have almost completed this project. So I'm gonna say logout. Okay, I'm going to initialize uh, on press function on the pressable over here. So on press equals to log out. So I'm going to define the function right at the top over here. Okay, you can just go ahead and copy that out. So for basically, I'm going to initialize the function clear auth token. And inside the clear auth token, I'm just going to remove the token with the help of the key that we used previously, that's auth token. And uh, after that, I'm going to say router.replace to forward slash authenticate and then forward slash login so i'm going to save the file and if i press on log out automatically i come to the login screen so we have successfully completed this project so yes that's it about this project so we have implemented a lot of features and functionality starting off from connecting our project to the mongodb backend and then initializing all of our models and then we also went through how we can connect with different users and then show the correct ui changes in the correct network screen in the post we were actually able to you know create a post and then the same thing we were able to store uh, basically the image in the uh, firebase storage bucket and that particular url only we are going to store in the mongodb backend as well which made us easy to uh, get the image url while showing all of the posts in the home screen we also designed the profile screen as well and finally we have completed this project so if you find this interesting hit the like button and let's see you in the next video and then thank you for watching